This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. Yes, the flames and embers of competition beginning to heat up here on the banks of the Monongahela River in Morgantown. Why? Well, Ray Rice of Rutgers will try to lead his team into a task that they've never completed before. They're trying for their first ever Big East Championship. Undaunted, standing their way tonight, Steve Slayton, the second leading rusher in the nation. A great battle of running backs tonight on the field. And the dream for Rutgers all began with this guy, the head coach, Greg Schiano. Rutgers against West Virginia. It's coming up next. Back to you guys. Welcome to the College Football Scoreboard, presented by Pizza Hut. Seven times in the nine-year history of the BCS, a team ranked in the top two has lost its final game of the regular season. We might be less than four minutes away from the eighth team falling. Glad to have you along as we get ready for West Virginia and Rutgers. Oh, look at this cast, cast I've got. Thousands. Man, I need, I need a depth chart here. <laughs> Lou Holtz, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Mark May. I'm Reese Davis. Glad to have you guys in with us. Thank USC, a win away from playing for the national championship. Going into the Rose Bowl, remember two years ago, the Bruins came within five points of derailing the Trojan dream. Patrick Cowan, pass incomplete in a 7-0 game, but holding to a BCS game. They take on the Mountaineers in a bit. College football score. I play very much. They will still beat Rutgers. Well, I'm going with Rutgers. Urgency, redemption. Urgency, they go to the Orange Bowl when they win it. Redemption, they haven't beaten West Virginia since 1806. <laughs> I'm going with Rutgers in an upset. 1806. Yeah. I'm with Coach Holtz. I'm going to go with uh, West Virginia at home. They're going to play with a great deal of emotion tonight. Pat White throwing the ball tonight will be a big key for the Mounties. I'm going to go with Rutgers. They're All right. Yeah, because yeah. they're defensively really giving good. up 12 points per game. And not only that, Pat White with the injured ankle, 15 rushing yards. I, I can forget it. He's that's not going to do that's it. That's good. Do it with the arm. All right. 2-2. Two, two. We'll see how it goes. That game about to kick off. USC has a couple of timeouts left. They're down 13-9 to UCLA. We'll keep you up to date. Now it's time for the Big East battle. Rutgers trying to go to the BCS. Under a luminous, bright night sky here in Morgantown, West Virginia, the stars are ready to shine as the state continue to mount for the respective teams and their fans. The games continue to get even more important. Rutgers tries to win its first ever conference championship, but the Mountaineers of West Virginia don't want it to happen at their expense. We welcome you to ESPN's College Football Primetime and Championship Saturday on a potential night of enthronement and enshrinement for one team out of the state of New Jersey, the Rutgers University Scarlet Knights. Tonight, they take on the 9-2 West Virginia Mountaineers here at Sold Out Mountaineer Field, over 60,000 people on hand. Now the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. Louisville defeated Connecticut tonight, but should Rutgers win tonight against West Virginia, then Rutgers would get the BCS bid. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with David Norrie. Stacy Dale's down in the field, joining us in just a few moments. Rutgers played in the very first college football game some 137 years ago, but tonight they stand on the brink of winning their first ever Big East championship. David, Rutgers used to be the punchline in a very bad football joke, but right now they're led by two NFL-caliber running backs. Yeah, you start out at fullback with Brian Leonard. He's really the top dual threat fullback in the country. The Scarlet Knights have great comfort when he has the ball in his hands rushing the football and a very dynamic pass catcher from the fullback position coming out of the backfield. In fact, he has over 200 receptions as a pass receiver for Rutgers over his career. And then Ray Rice. What more can you say about Ray Rice, the Heisman candidate? I think he's on track to make the trip through the Lincoln Tunnel to that Heisman ceremony in New York later on this month. He's a do-it-all back, a punishing runner. Both of these running backs are going to have to have huge nights if Rutgers is going to spring the upset. If there's anybody that can weave their way through Lincoln Tunnel traffic, it's Ray Rice at running back for Rutgers. Now on the 
other side of the field. West Virginia trying to bounce back from a stunning 24-19 loss last week at home here against South Florida. That's the question that begs, how do they bounce back? And if they can, Pat White, their starting quarterback, how much can he contribute coming into this game on two bad wheels? Well, and you look at the ankle problem that he has. He also has a turf toe, but the ankle will know by the end of the first quarter whether Pat White can play like the Pat White that we know. Everybody understands his threat in terms of running the football, but maybe the big story tonight, the key to tonight's game is going to be can Pat White take the opportunities he has on the big plays down the field in the passing game. Rutgers is going to load up the line of scrimmage. Can Pat White hit balls to his big play receivers down the field? An extremely talented quarterback. Pat White, a sophomore, but part of the story tonight, the seniors. 25 of them for Rich Rodriguez playing in their final home game here on Mountaineer Field. This is a senior class that helped turn things around for Rich Rodriguez and this entire program. With the win tonight, they would become the winningest senior class in school history, featuring back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. The Mountaineers standing in the way of Rutgers and a potential Big East title. Rich Rodriguez says he doesn't want the Scarlet Knights to be partying at midfield. For the Rutgers football program, the 2006 season has been one of unprecedented success. Doormats no more. The Scarlet Knights have reached heights previously thought unattainable. Tonight, the State University of New Jersey plays for the right to punch their ticket to the BCS. Standing in their way, perhaps the nation's most electrifying backfield combination. Pat White and Steve Slayton lead a West Virginia offense capable of putting up points in bunches. The Big East gets settled tonight. Rutgers, West Virginia, next. Today I earned rewards points wicked fast. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. Back under the lights here at Mountaineer Field, right now downstairs to Stacey Dales. Well, Mark, quarterback play will be critical for both teams in this game. West Virginia, of course, still reeling from the South Florida loss. And in that loss, critical high ankle sprain to quarterback Patrick White. He wore a walking boot earlier this week, returned to full practice on Wednesday. But Coach Rodriguez told us this week that White admitted Monday that he just couldn't cut the way he wanted to in the South Florida game. We'll see if he has the mobility that he wants and needs today, guys. And on the other side, Rutgers quarterback Mike Teal said West Virginia's defense is the most unique and perhaps toughest they've seen all season with that 3-5-3 scheme. He said you get linemen and linebackers coming at you from every direction at a very rapid pace. He knows that he has to manage this game, guys, and we'll see how it unveils tonight, Mark. Yes, Stacy, Mike Teal and that Rutgers offense are going to have to deal with the best rush defense in the Big East Conference. A very frigid night here. The Mercury continuing to plunge 32 degrees. Not much wind down to the field, but mostly clear. No rain, although it did rain a little bit yesterday for quite some time. We are getting ready for the opening kick. West Virginia winning the opening toss. They defer to the second half. Rutgers will receive the opening kick. Rich Rodriguez in his sixth season here in West Virginia. He says there's plenty at stake still. We're playing for a January bowl game and back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. Greg Shannon has told his team ad nauseum this week, Keep your eyes on the process and not the prize. Don't buy into the hype of the moment. And we are set to get this thing underway. A couple of great special teams player back on the opening kick for Rutgers. Willie Foster, number 84, and James Townsend, number 83. But no kickoff return this time. Let's take a look at that offensive unit for Rutgers and the impact players. Ray Russ, Rice, the fourth leading rusher in the nation this year, Brian Leonard. Not impressive statistics, but he can make some throws, David. Well, and, and you look at Mike Teal, I think he's going to be a big, uh, big key in this football game. You got the two talented uh, players in the backfield. Brian Leonard actually came into the season as a Heisman Trophy candidate in his own right, but Teal is going to have to have some success through the airways to give room to run for both Rice and Leonard. A big key. 
First down and 10 for Rutgers from their own 20 yard line. Handed off to Ray Rice and he stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Take a look at the starters now for Rutgers. They have several players that have won state championships, albeit in high school. And there's a look at one of the most talented offensive lines in the country. The lineups tonight brought to you by UPS. Second and ten. Pass complete to Kenny Britt. Britt has a first down and now he's near the 40-yard line. Britt coming off a great week last week in their win against Syracuse. He caught the first two touchdowns of his young career in a nice pickup of 19 yards. And Teal is going to have to make those kinds of throws throughout the night. West Virginia's defense, one of the top 10 defenses in the country against the run. Only given up in the neighborhood of 79 yards per game. Teal's going to have to be efficient. The game isn't on his shoulders, but he's going to have to have success to keep things loose for the running game. First down and 10 out near the 40-yard line. They hand it off to Young, and Young breaks one down to the 46-yard line. Cordell Young, not Ray Rice that time, with another first down. And the score just coming in after that 50-yard gain UCLA has just defeated USC, so that, David, throws the entire BCS picture into a state of upheaval. The final score in that, 13-9, as the Bruins break the losing streak against USC. That's going to set off a celebration in Ann Arbor as well as down in Gainesville. And be very interesting to see tomorrow which one of those two teams will advance to play Ohio State. Mike Teal to pass, throws a nice ball complete to Underwood, and Underwood picks up another Rutgers first down deep into Mountaineer territory in the 16-yard line. Underwood, the 6'2 sophomore. Here's a look at the defensive unit that's going to try and slow down Rutgers. 25 seniors playing their final home game, and there's four of them right there. Young, Boo McClee, the team's leading tackler, a couple of guys to watch, Jay Henry, an academic All-American, and Eric Wicks. Who had a pick last week. And McLee and Wicks are going to have to have big games for West Virginia. They're the playmakers. They're the best blitzers for this West Virginia defensive unit. A 30-yard pickup on that last play. And it's Ray Rice bouncing it outside. Breaks a tackle. Ray Rice. Touchdown, Scarlet Knights. <laughs> An impressive opening salvo fired by Rutgers. Ray Rice with his 18th rushing touchdown this season and the 23rd of his career. Much like last week and their bounce back victory at home against Syracuse, Rutgers comes out and looks impressive on their opening drive. And Jeremy Ito in now for the extra point. Rutgers hasn't won here ever. In 14 tries, they've come up empty. And there have been some embarrassing defeats along that path. Ray Rice trying to rewrite some of that history right now. We'll be back. Rutgers on their opening series of the ball game goes five plays, 80 yards, 210 on the clock. And Ray Rice. Good thing he's not a history major because the history not good for Rutgers. They've won 11, lost 11 straight times against West Virginia overall 14 times in a row here at Mountaineer Field. They've never won here. Yeah, last six trips to West Virginia, Rutgers has lost by an average of 42 points. The last six times they came in here to play the Mountaineers. Tough for Rutgers to be overconfident coming into this game, but what a first drive they put together. To see how well West Virginia absorbs that opening blow. Rivers on the kickoff return. And Vaughn Rivers is going to be brought down at the 20-yard line. Big news back in Los Angeles, and we go back to the studio for more. Reese? All right, Mark, Taco Bell studio update. This is it. USC down to UCLA. John David Booty with the desperation heaps. And with that, 
the Trojans clinch a Rose Bowl berth. That's not what they wanted. Champions of the Pac-10, but they will not play for the national title. UCLA knocks off USC 13-9. Now the door is open for Florida and Michigan. Yeah, recent really is wide open. Pat White in a quarterback. Pat White playing. Actually, we have a new quarterback in the ballgame. Pat White unable to go. And it's incomplete. Brandon Miles, the intended receiver on the play. Jared Brown in the ballgame. Brown hasn't gotten a lot of action this year. Rich Rodriguez told our Stacey Dales and us in our meetings that it was going to be pretty much a game time decision. Yeah, that's nicked up late last week. This is a surprise. And by all accounts, the indications we're getting out of the West Virginia camp, Pat White was going to go. So it's a big part of their offense. Brown out to the 25 yard line. Rodriguez did say that he felt confident in his abilities to run this team. We'll see if that bears out. Brown in a quarterback. And there's a look at some of the key players to watch. Brandon Miles, one of the top receivers. Palmer, Moses, and Sheffy. Some of the seniors playing in their final home game here at Mount Near Field. Third down and six for West Virginia. Brown working out of the shotgun. Well, he looked like Pat White on that play. Brown out to the 36-yard line, getting the first down. Picked up 11 yards, and here's a look at some of the players on Rutgers' defensive unit that have won high school titles. Beckford and Meekins. Meekins a key guy inside. Rankert, Thompson, a couple of clutch linebackers, Geralt, Green, and McCourtney. First down and 10. Knows the ball just inside the 35-yard line. Brown working out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Slayton, and Slayton picks up another first down at the 47-yard line. Got a nice block from Owen Schmidt, who is a punishing blocker from his fullback spot. Well, they talked about the health of Pat White, and obviously he didn't get the start, but the health of Owen Schmidt has been a big story as well, and he lends a lot of physical ability to this Offensive line up front, a great lead blocker, and Jarrett Brown looking pretty impressive from that quarterback spot on the opening drive. First down to 10, Brown hands it off to Slayton. Slayton stopped up at the 46-yard line, and Steve Slayton came into this game. The number two rusher in the country, but last week held to just 43 yards against South Florida. Stop on the play made by Westerman. South Florida in that football game. Played a lot of zero coverage, and zero coverage, man-to-man -man across the field, no help with the free safety. South Florida was able to get numbers up on the line of scrimmage. Only 60 yards combined between White and Slayton running the football in that game. Second down and nine coming up for West Virginia. Empty backfield, and Brown tries to get to the edge. Which his hat down is pushed out of bounds at the 48-yard line, about six yards short of the first down. Jason McCourty making the stop on the play. There he is, number 25, the 5'11 sophomore. He made one of the biggest plays of the season for Rutgers against South Florida earlier this year, knocking down a pass in the end zone to save Rutgers from overtime. They won that game 22-20. to Third and seven coming up. Working out of the shotgun. Jarrett Brown in a quarterback. Pat White in his almost 3,000 yards of total offense on the sidelines. Brown with the pass to Slayton. First down Mountaineers at the 21-yard line. Slayton getting in behind Devin McCourty for 31 yards. Now this is a nice throw to open up the game for Brown. Just a wheel route out of the backfield. Slayton and Brown delivers the ball to Slayton in stride. Boy, Jarrett Brown really showed a deft touch on that pass. First down and 10. Handed off. 
Now the 19 yard line is Slayton, Steve Slayton. What a great story if you don't already know it. Boy, a little over 12 months ago at this time, he was the number four guy on the depth chart. Right now, the number two rusher in the country. Yeah, true freshman. Really looked like he was going to be the caddy to a very highly touted freshman, Jason Gwaltney. Did not get a start for Rich Rodriguez until halfway through that true freshman year. Six touchdowns a year ago against Louisville, and the comeback win really put him on the map. Second down and eight. And Westerman making a stop on that play. As Brown is brought down almost immediately. Great matchup when you look at offense versus defense. It's the number three total offense in the country in West Virginia against the number three total defense in Rutgers. Doesn't get much better than that, do No, and Rutgers really lives off movement. They move at before and after the snap of the football. Not a big defensive unit, but they rely on their blitzing and the ability to get numbers up on the line of scrimmage to stop the run. Tenth play of the drive, Brown. And it's dropped incomplete over the middle at the nine-yard line intended for Raynaud, and Geralt broke that up. Boy, Geralt and Courtney Green, a couple of talented safeties. Big hitters as well. A fourth down coming up. And Pat McAfee coming in to attempt the field goal for the Mountaineers. This try going to come from just inside the 30-yard line, making it about a 38-yarder. McAfee on the season, 12 of 15, his longest 51. Knocks this one through, and West Virginia answers, not with a touchdown, but with at least a score. With 9.03 to go in the first quarter, Rutgers on senior day answering the Rutgers, pardon me, West Virginia answering the Rutgers score. Ball Prime Time, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com and Berkwood.net, the ultimate college football fan site. Chilly night here in Morgantown, West Virginia. Rutgers about to get the ball once again on their last drive. They're opening one of the ball game. Kenny Britt with a nice catch. No, it wasn't Ray Rice. It was Cordell Young, number eight on this run. An impressive one, and then into the end zone they went behind a nice catch from Underwood and then Ray Rice capping off that drive. 7-3 Rutgers with the lead. West Virginia answering just a few moments ago with a McAfee field goal. Rutgers hasn't won here ever. 14 consecutive times they've tried. 14 times they failed. This is Young taking an E in the end zone. And Rutgers is going to start off on its own 20-yard line. Mike Teal, just a sophomore, David. Let's talk about him just a little bit. Just a sophomore. Threw four picks in that loss against Cincinnati, but bounced back nicely against Syracuse in their last game. Well, and, and he came off a season a year ago where he averaged an interception for every 10 attempts, and part of the offseason work was to get Mike Teal better as a decision maker. He's made big strides for Greg Schiano in the, those departments, but you know, he has got to put together a game very unlike the Cincinnati game tonight. This is Leonard. Brian Leonard met at about the 23-yard line by Eric Wicks. Teal, as a starter, going back to his high school days, is 35-2 and two as a starting quarterback. He was 23-0 at Don Bosco in New Jersey. Well, he's done a lot of winning and not many losses at the high school or the college level, but to bring up the Cincinnati game, and he's gotten off to a great start tonight, two for two for 49 yards on that opening scoring drive. Harrison Johnson, a couple of tight ends in on this formation. The three-step drop. Underneath, it's complete to Underwood, and Underwood picks up the first down at the 32-yard line, where he's brought down by Eric Wicks. A pickup of eight yards, and they move the chains. And when you attack this West Virginia defense, and they're one of the top ten defenses in the country against the run, but they're susceptible to play action. And when you have the threat 
with a Rice and a Leonard in the backfield. I think Teal's going to have some opportunities off play action to get some work done down the field. On first and ten, Rice and Leonard line up out of the eye. Rice is a deep back. And it's Ray Rice between the tackles out near the 40-yard line. A nice gain of about six yards by the 5'9 sophomore. Rice initially committed to Syracuse University, but then when Paul Pasqualoni, their coach at the time, was fired, he changed his mind, and Greg Schiano came calling, and said, how'd you like to join us? We're still interested. Still got love for you. He decided to sign and brought a couple of his new Rochelle High School teammates with him. And what really sets Rice apart, he gets stronger as the game goes on. His biggest work typically comes in the second half and on into the fourth quarter. Little blitz coming from West Virginia, and a man open downfield at the 30-yard line. It's complete. Down to the 24, Kenny Britt continues to make big plays for Rutgers, and it's another first down on a big pickup. A true freshman, Kenny Britt, has really been coming on for Rutgers over the last three to four weeks. Very talented physically, and he's just going to get behind the cornerback here on a go route. And that was a tremendous move to set things up down the field for Mike Teal. First down and 10, Cordell Young in the backfield. Young on the toss. Young hit hard at the 18-yard line. Larry Williams making the stop on the play. Boy, that offensive line really gashing that defensive front for West Virginia. Yeah, they're taking control of this football game early. And in West Virginia with the 3-3-5 attack. And the 3-3-5 attack. West Virginia goes with that defensive unit because they really don't have the athletes up front to play four down linemen. They go with skill athletes and speed, and one of the prevailing thoughts in attacking the 3-3-5 is to run the ball right at him. Ray Rice in a tailback. He's gonna blow this one dead. A little motion on the right side of that offensive line in the vicinity of Pedro Sosa. On the line tonight for Rutgers, a BCS bid with a win. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Number 63, five-yard penalty, still second down. Cameron Stevenson, the right guard, just to count early. But you watch this offensive line up front, and you look at the yards for Ray Rice, just short of 1,500 coming into this football game. They're looking at a safety or two in the box throughout the season and they're getting some nice work up front early in this game. Campbell in motion to the top of your screen. The handoff is to Rice, and he's chopped down short of the 20-yard line at the 21 as we check in in New York with Reese Davis. All right, Mark, Florida and Arkansas in the SEC championship game after a Chris Leak interception. How about Darren McFadden, his third touchdown pass of the season to Felix Jones? And here come the Hogs down just by three. And uh, for the geographically challenged, it's actually Bristol, Connecticut. You think the Wolverines are watching that game right now? Big time. You think they're tuned in? Third and seven coming up. Complete underneath, but short of the first down on the reception. There's Underwood, and Underwood still on the turf. John Holmes with good pressure on the play. Underwood holding his right leg. They've already lost three frontline receivers this year. Now West Virginia, pressure on Mike Teal. It looks like Underwood's ankle might have gotten rolled up underneath him on the tackle. And one of the big questions, Mark Jones, coming into this game, how would West Virginia be mentally after getting really knocked out of the BCS race, upset at home by South Florida, and and Rich Rodriguez watching Rutgers come down the field on that first drive, I, I bet he couldn't help but think that 
they were still experiencing a hangover off that game. Yeah, especially in the way that Rutgers was able to run the ball against the number one defense, rush defense, in the Big East. A lot of news on the respective sidelines for the different teams, uh, especially as, as it concerns their head coaches. Rich Rodriguez, the center of a controversy swirling, and it picked up a little bit of steam last night when a report came down the pipe that there was a deal done already for him to accept the head coaching job at Alabama. And throughout the course of the night on a live radio show here locally, Coach Rodriguez was almost forced to respond, and he said, uh, I'm going to repeat myself as clear as I can. I plan on being the coach at West Virginia for the rest of my career if they will have me. That's basically what he said. <laughs> Operative words there are, I plan. <laughs> when they come out of Tuscaloosa and start offering some dollars, and obviously Rich Rodriguez is the only one that can answer those questions, but a lot of history at Alabama. And you know, on the other side of the field, Greg Ciano, a lot of rumors swirling around his potential exit south to that Miami job, vacated by Larry Coker. Jeremy Ito in to attempt a field goal from 36 yards out. 15 of 19 on the year, none bigger than the game winner against Louisville. And this one will help too. Ito gives Rutgers a 10 to 3 lead with 4.11 to go in the first period. Two for two on their opening drives of the ball game. They call him the judge, but the final verdict isn't even close to being decided yet. Welcome back, everyone, under the lights at Mountaineer Field here in Morgantown, West Virginia. I'm Mark Jones, along with David Norrie and Stacy Dales. Rutgers looking to end years and years of misery with the win tonight. They will become the Big East champions and get the subsequent BCS bid. There's a lot of speculation that it could be the Orange Bowl. Well, and the BCS slots are going to be jumbled after what happened out in Pasadena earlier today. Looks like USC will be headed to the Rose Bowl. Back deep, it's Rivers and Renaud. And Renaud trips up at the 25-yard line. Hey, Stacy, what's up with Pat White? Well, Mark, I just made eye contact with Pat White, and I verbalized to him, can you go? How's your ankle? And he just shook his head, no, not good circumstances for this West Virginia team. Rodriguez told me, Coach Rodriguez told me before the game, we've got to have a running quarterback in our offense, and clearly White is not equipped to do that, Mark. It's ironic that years ago, this was mostly a passing offense, the way they ran things. When Pat White emerged, it became more of a running offense. And right now, this offense belongs to Jarrett Brown, 6'3", 220-pound redshirt freshman. Brown hands it off to Steve Slate. And Slate makes it out to the 27-yard line where he's brought down by Brandon Rankar. Steve Slayton, by the way, not exactly healthy either. He has an injured right wrist. They say that will require surgery at the end of the season. Now you look at all three starters in the backfield, White, Slayton, Owen Schmidt, all with injury problems. And uh, you look at Jared Brown coming in, a redshirt freshman. Obviously not a lot of big game experience, but he has a talented throwing arm, and he is also a very capable runner. Not as fast as Pat White. Runs maybe a 4 or 5, but still a threat with his legs. Here's Steve Slayton brought down at the line of scrimmage. May have even lost a yard at the 26-yard line. Steve Slayton last week against South Florida held to just 43 yards, and he was of the opinion that ultimately he was going to break one. It never really did happen, but South Florida a little bit different than Rutgers. The feeling in South Florida might have more speed than any other defense in this conference. I don't think Rutgers is going to be able to play with as heavy dose a man-to-man -man coverage. They're not going to be able to take chances. West Virginia has too many athletes on the outside that can hurt you in the passing game. Third and long, a passing situation for Brown. Tripped up and brought down at the 22-yard line by Ramil Meekins. The 6'2", 275-pound senior 
Both he and Foster, the big force inside for that Rutgers defensive unit. And it's fourth down coming up for West Virginia. Yeah, this defense really starts inside with the two defensive tackles, Beacons and Foster, the co-captains. There's a look at Underwood being carted off the field. Underwood had a big catch on that opening touchdown drive of the ball game for Rutgers. Willie Foster back there for Rutgers standing at his own 39-yard line. Last year, he and Townsend teamed up to be one of the most potent special teams unit in the conference. And it bounces over their heads respectively, and what a punt this is going to end up being all the way down to the four-yard line. McAfee with a great punt. Well, is it Monday yet? Two teams try to keep pace in a wide open NFC wildcard race. Steve Smith and the Carolina Panthers, Brian Westbrook in Philadelphia on other opposite sides. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD and Spanish on ESPN Deportes. A 75-yard punt, a lot of it on the roll from McCaff McAfee. First and 10 Rutgers, Ray Rice, the deep back out of the offset eye. Rice on the handoff. Keeley making a stop for West Virginia as we check in with Reese. Reese, you are in Bristol, okay? I'm in the nutmeg state, my friend. Big 12 championship game. Nebraska fumbled on his first play from scrimmage. Alex Patrick makes them pay. Sooners on top of Nebraska, 7-0 early in the first quarter. All right, and uh, we had a chance to look at Zach Taylor in Nebraska last week. Looked real impressive against Colorado. Uh, don't look now, but Oklahoma, that's a team. A lot of people had them finished midway through the season. They could end up in the top five in the country before this is all over. Second and nine. Ray Rice battling for every yard out to the nine-yard line. Got four on that play. It'll set up a third down and about five to go. Sorry, Mark, with the clock ticking down here. This offensive line for Rutgers. You know, you start a championship team, you start it up front with the offensive line. I was very impressed with the way the Scarlet Knights played up front in this first quarter. That's the end of the first 15 minutes of play. The first quarter in the books. West Virginia trying to get it done on senior night. Greg Shiano's team trying to win their first ever Big East Conference Championship. Back with more right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to Morgantown, West Virginia, on the banks of the Monongahela River. Tale of the tape between the top two running backs in this game and two of the top running backs in the nation. Rice coming in number four, Slate number two. Third down and about four coming up from Rutgers at their own ten. Grid in motion. Teal under heat, and it's incomplete. Intended for James Townsend, but big pressure coming right up the middle from Kevin Boo McClee. And with this 3-3-5 defense for the Mountaineers, what it does is it gives you the ability to bring pressure from many different angles and different spots on the field. Big chore. Looked like that pass attempt from Mike Teal might have hit the umpire. Joe so Radigan now punting. One of the top punters in the nation, the top punter in the Big East, from his own end zone. A line drive that comes down at the 47, and great special teams coverage that time on Rivers as he's brought down immediately. A 43-yard punt, nothing on the return. We check in with this 30-30 update with Reese Davis. 
All right, Mark, the story of the day up to this point in college football, UCLA knocks off USC 13-9 and knocked the Trojans out of the national championship game. Carl Durrell getting his first victory over SC. A highly anticipated debut of Ohio State's Greg Oden came against Valpo, and the big freshman turned in a double-double. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News, always on your television set. All right, Reese back here, West Virginia with good starting field position on this drive. Jarrett Brown in at quarterback. Headed off to Owen Schmidt, 6'3 junior. And Teal, that last incompletion, by the way, was his first miss of the night. Yeah, hot start for Teal, 5 for 5, 96 yards. And taking a look at that last third down play for Rutgers. Sometimes the officials are more open than your receivers. And there's been a lot of talk <laughs> at the pro level and the college level of, of moving the umpire. Brown completes the pass down to the 35-yard line. Brandon Miles with his first reception tonight. And it's a first down Mountaineers. Boy, Jarrett Brown has a little touch on his pass. Well, the line on Jarrett Brown. We talked to Coach Rodriguez earlier in the week. He's the stronger passer of the two quarterbacks. Doesn't scare you quite as much with his feet as a Pat White, but the ball comes out with some velocity from Jarrett Brown. First down and 10 from the Rutgers 36. Brown hands it off to Slayton. And Slayton makes it down to the 32-yard line where Green makes the stop. Courtney Green, the six-foot sophomore for Rutgers. And one of the big challenges for the Scarlet Knights defense coming in this game is just to get adjusted to the quickness and the speed, the flat-out speed of this West Virginia offense. No way to duplicate that on the practice field during the week. Second down and six for the Mountaineers. Brown keeps it himself and is brought down. Oh, he's still on his feet. Wow, what a play by Jared Brown. Appeared to be bottled up but made it down to the 30 as we check in with Reese Davis in this in-game update. Mark, an unbelievable turn of events in Atlanta. Florida once up 17-0 on Arkansas. Antoine Robinson picks off the shovel pass from Chris Lee. Second interception leak is thrown in the second half. The Hogs are up by four. Wow, wow. We're really gonna we're really gonna have to take some inventory if can, Arkansas wins that. Can you say Big Ten rematch? <laughs> Third and four coming up for the Mountaineers. Brown incomplete, a little bit wide, intended for Palmer out of the backfield, the fullback. Fourth down coming up. They're on the fringes of field goal range, but it looks like uh, they're going to keep the offensive unit in there with Jared Brown. Yeah, I like this call. You know, you don't pick up a lot of field position by punting the football, especially on a punt that goes into the end zone. Fourth and four. This is an offense that's equipped to pick up a first down on these types of situations. Well, there's flags down in the play. Brown goes down back at the 39. The offensive linemen have not moved to this minute. They haven't moved even now. Look at that. Still holding their water. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is called an on-the-line freeze, and offensive lines are taught to keep their stance. All sides. On the defense. It worked. Number 56. Five-yard penalty. Old result. First down. And I played for an offensive coordinator at UCLA, a guy by the name of Homer Smith, and he was really the pioneer of that move to really display, give a picture to the officials of the discipline up front. Rich Rodriguez, a friend of Homer Smith, probably learned a little bit from <laughs> my offensive coordinator back at UCLA. And Rodriguez took it to another level. The spread offense of his, Salem State, Glenville State, modified it to Clemson. First down and 10. Slayton trying to get to the edge and cuts it upfield, brought down at about the 22 yard line. Second down coming up for West Virginia, trailing right now 10 to 3. You know, this game, very important for West Virginia. They can't win the conference championship, but they can, with a win tonight, register back-to-back 10-win -back seasons and go to a January bowl game. Well, you look at the bowl implications, and they are they're serious. So West Virginia can get into the Gator Bowl, most likely, with a win tonight. If not, they fall all the way to the Texas Bowl. Second down and eight. 
On the reverse, it's Renaud. And he's brought down at the 23-yard line. Be about six yards short of the first down. Jason McCourty making a stop on the play. And, of course, the, the game that really vaulted this program, even more so in the national prominence, they beat Georgia last year in the Sugar Bowl impressively. Uh, impressively, to say the least. And Steve Slayton, over 200 yards. Broke a three-decade-old record in the Sugar Bowl, set by Tony Dorsett, and won the Big East Conference. A lot of respect and credibility in the process. Third and seven coming up. Brown working out of the shotgun. And he put it on the ground. It's loose. And the Mountaineers appear to have recovered the fumble. It was not loose by Ramil Meekins. Boy, Meekins and Foster inside wreaking havoc. And, David, that's one thing we haven't talked about is the quickness of that defensive front of Rutgers. Well, they're undersized, and they talked to Greg Schiano this week. He said, we not only move, but we have to move after the snap. We don't have the size to engage with big offensive linemen, but they've got a lot of skilled athletes that bring pressure up front, and it starts with the co-captains at the tackle positions. McAfee going to attempt this field goal from about 48 yards out. And it comes up about a yard or so short. So they come up empty on that drive and still trail by seven points. McAfee with a strong leg came into this game 12 of 15 of the season. We'll be back with more after this. Captain Mountaineer on hand here at Mountaineer Field under the lights in Morgantown. Rutgers leading West Virginia 10-3 with 9.50 to go in the second period. Mike Teal, their quarterback, has done a nice job managing this game. Brit in motion to the top of your screen. Quick flip to Rice, and he's brought down at about the 32-yard line by Reed Williams. It's interesting you talk about Ray Rice, all the attention that he's gotten, and it's actually Brian Leonard who was garnering more of the attention prior to Rice's arrival, but the two of them have kind of embraced each other, and uh, there's healthy competition between them, and Leonard looks at Rice as his protege now. It's a great story. Second down and nine. Teal, incomplete at the 45-yard line intended for Britt. Well, Brian Leonard is the school's all-time leading scorer. And he actually did it last week. Against Syracuse, coach put him in, kept him, and gave him the ball eight consecutive times on a drive. And at the end of the day, it was Brian Leonard leading the band in victory. He's not a selfish guy, but Shiano made sure to keep him in the ball game. Wasn't going to let him out. Really wanted to get him that record. And Coach Shiano issued a, a bit of an apology to Greg Robinson, the head coach of Syracuse, after the game by way of the press conference said, hey, I might have violated protocol, but it seemed right to get him the record at home. Teal in the pocket. Fires a dart complete at midfield to Tim Brown. Tim Brown makes the catch. Brown, one of the fastest receivers offensively for Rutgers. An 18-yard pickup. Solid throw by Teal. And Teal has, be has been regarded as one of the chinks in Rutgers' offense throughout the year. You know, he's, he's managed games well. Had the meltdown against Cincinnati. But I've been impressed with his ability to get the ball down the field tonight. Cordell Young now in a tailback on first down and 10 from midfield. Rutgers has been able to move the ball with relative ease against West Virginia. And Young tripped up at the 49-yard line. And for more on Brian Leonard downstairs to Stacy. 
Well, guys, I had a chance to talk to Brian this week, and I said, well, what's your edge? What makes you good? You know he's really humble and a very modest guy, but he says he just stays out of trouble. He always does a little bit extra. He still lifts weights by himself outside of the team, and he does extra running on his own. He said he knows he's versatile, but he just doesn't put bad things in his body. He doesn't party, guys. A perfect example of a Greg Schiano type player, Mark. Certainly is, and he bought into the vision that Schiano had and helped this magical season unfold. Second down and ten. The backs line up out of the eye. Leonard and Rice. Ray Rice on the carry. Brought down to the 47-yard line. And, you know, Brian Leonard, Rice on the carry. back when this team was 1-11, and 11, fans would, you know, egg his car, throw a bunch of dirt on it. As good as he's playing right now, they probably should be washing his car and parking it for him. And at the NFL level, you look over the years to take a look at Coach Giano watching intently from the sideline. And players like Tom Rathman for the 49ers, Daryl Johnson with the Dallas Cowboys, Rob Conrad with the Dolphins. Always a spot for a fullback at the next level that can run the football and catch the ball as well as Leonard can out of the backfield. Looking at a third down and six, and Teal steps back and calls a timeout. We'll take one right along with them. Mike Teal uh, dealing a nice set of cards right now. Back with more after this. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by ESPN Game Plan. Maximum college football. To order, call your pay-per-view provider or log on to ESPN.com. Search Game Plan. And FLAC. Ask about it at work. The crowd has been relatively silent so far. Home team leading on, to trailing on senior night, 10-3. to three. Third down and six. Rutgers with the ball. Leonard in motion. Teal incomplete at the 30-yard line. It was intended for his tight end, Clark Harris. One of the team's leading receivers hasn't caught a ball tonight. And it's fourth down coming up. Now Harris, one of the top tight ends in the country. A lot of preseason magazines had him rated as the number one tight end coming in. Hasn't had the numbers this year that he had a year ago. But a big part of this Rutgers pass offense. Joe Radigan into punt once again, and that is Vaughn Rivers standing on his own 10-yard line. Radigan has 19 punts this year that he's been able to place inside the 20-yard line. Let's see what he does on this one. Hangs it up high. Rivers with the decoy. He's going to land this one inside the 20-yard line as well. It'll come down at the 13-yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis in Bristol. Mark Ford has made a couple of horrible errors in the third quarter of the SEC championship game against Arkansas, but the Hogs do the same thing and return the favor. For some reason, Reggie Fish tries to field this punt over his shoulder. The Gators recover in the end zone. Wandy Pierre-Louis with the touchdown. Gators up by three late in the third. Man, Reese, you talk about a gift. Arkansas and Florida battling it out. You saw the numbers. First down and 10. Coming back the other way for West Virginia. Brown throwing it at the feet of his intended receiver, Reynard. Second down and 10. An agitated Rich Rodriguez on the sidelines. Now you watch both of the defenses tonight. Both defenses getting numbers up on the line of scrimmage. And Jarrett Brown is going to have to hit some balls. He's going to have to get more consistent in the passing game where the Scarlet Knights are going to continue to load up. Second down and 10. They're going to run it this time. A gaping hole up the middle that calls D. Slayton's name. Slayton on the move. First down, West Virginia into Rutgers territory. Courtney Green missed a tackle that allowed even more yardage by Slayton. A 45-yard game. Now, one of the misnomers about the West Virginia running offense, that it's a finesse running game. Great work up front by the big guys. A very physical outfit. And then the Rutgers secondary getting a taste 
of Slayton in space. And David, you notice those Mountaineer receivers blocking downfield too, including Brandon Miles. First down and 10. Brown going to keep it over the right side, crossing the 40, down to the 39-yard line. Hey, how would you evaluate Jarrett Brown? Getting the surprise start in place of Pat White, who's out with the turf toe and the ankle injury. Well, he's gotten heavy reps as we watch West Virginia, always in the no-huddle status. They're, they're not in a hurry, but... You know, Brown got a lot of reps in practice this week, and, and Rich Rodriguez, he said, we're not afraid to put him in the game in big situations. He has talent as a runner and a throw. Second and six. Slayton got drilled by DeBron Thompson, the 5'11 senior. Thompson uh, had played in every game in the three years at Rutgers. Makes the calls back there, gets those linebackers lined up, and a nice hit. Well, the Rutgers defense has made a name for themselves with their attack style defense. Not afraid to come up and meet your face mask to face mask. One of the top defensive units in the country. Third down and five coming up. Brown on a predetermined run won't get anywhere. He's going to lose about four yards back to the 40 yard line. Frierson making the stop on the play with 440 to go in the first half. The Rutgers, when they saw Pat White out of the game on the opening series of this football game, their defensive game plan changed. And they're playing a little bit more run heavy up front. They're committing to the line of scrimmage. And they're going to make Jarrett Brown prove to them that he can hit balls down the field and make some big plays to the wide receiver group outside. West Virginia punting. McAfee going to aim for the coffin corner. And Foster calls for the fair catch at the six-yard line. A 34-yard punt, nothing on the return. When we come back, another look at Ray Rice. Will he win the Heisman this year? We'll get more than a few votes. Back after this. The Big East Championship. Look at the total yards so far, out gaining West Virginia. And surprisingly, a lot of those yards coming on the ground. Ray Rice, I said he'd get some Heisman votes. I just didn't say they'd be first place votes. Of course, Troy Smith is out there from Ohio State, but certainly it would set the table for next year and his campaign. Fumble! And Rice saving it for Rutgers back at the four yard line. Well, that might be one of the biggest plays that Rutgers will get from Ray Rice this season. <laughs> I mean, Rutgers with a BCS game on the line. Watch the play he makes covering the football. Great reaction beating Antonio Lewis, the cornerback, to the football. They lost a couple of yards at second down and 12 coming. Fans making a little bit of noise for one of the few times tonight. It's senior night, 25 of them playing their final home game. Ray Rice, at about three, brought down by McClee. Reese, tell us what's up with Oklahoma and Nebraska. Well, Mark, for the second time tonight, the Sooners have scored on a one-play drive. This time, Paul Thompson finding Malcolm Kelly and laying it out there beautifully for the touchdown. Sooner defense has been strong, 14-0. First quarter about to come to an end on ABC. I'm telling you, I would not want to... I would not want to line up against the Sooners in a BCS game. That team is rolling about as well as any team in the country right now. Whatever happened to Red Bomar, huh? Remember all the doom they predicted after he left? Thompson has done a super job coming in at quarterback for the Sooners. Third and nine, Young. Right down short of the first down at the 13. Fourth down coming up. And Rutgers will have to punt. West Virginia calls a timeout. Trying to manage the clock a little bit and get every available second to try and put some points on the board before the end of the half with 2.12 to go. That's a nice move by Rich Rodriguez. Well, teams with a couple of timeouts remaining. Mountaineers figure to get the ball near midfield. Oceano going to try and press the right buttons and his counterpart can try and do the same. We'll be back after this. West Virginia University is a successful business owner, star chef, and make cool friends. It all starts at Rutgers, New Jersey State University. 
From the classics to the cutting edge, wherever life takes you, Rutgers is your foundation for success. This is better than what you cooked in college. See what Rutgers does for you? Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey. Teaching, exploring, leading with a passion. Fourth and five, number 30 right there with his back to our camera. Joe Radigan going to punt for the third time tonight. Vaughn River standing at his own 40-yard line. West Virginia should get good field position out of this. Radigan, the best punter in the conference this year, needs a good one here. A line drive. Rivers fumbles it, then picks it up at the 43. Nice return. About 12 yards. We go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, the fall of Troy and what it means for the BCS Championship game. And if the Gators want to make their case, it's not as easy as it looked at the very beginning of the SEC title game. And how about the awakening in the ACC? Seeing if Rutgers can follow suit and get a BCS bid. We'll see you at halftime. All right, Reese, and uh, who would have ever thought that when the year started, neither Florida State or Miami would be in the picture in the ACC. The Deacons, the chance. Uh, Georgia Tech, a four-year starter at quarterback, the best wide receiver in the country, and they only score six points. First and ten. Down wisely throws it away. Second down coming up, stops the clock with 1.38 to go. Two timeouts remaining for each team. Well, now here's tonight's Athlon trivia question. Patrick White leads the leads all NCAA quarterbacks this season with 17 rushing touchdowns. Who leads West Virginia all time in single season rushing touchdowns? I, I might have a beat on this one. We break uh, break my 0 for 13 streak. Are you thinking Amos? I'm going in that direction. Second and ten, Brown. Incomplete. And no flag on the play intended for Jallo. It'll be third down and ten coming up. Uh, you look at the first half, just over a minute and a half left here before these teams head in the locker room, and you know, Rutgers learned from that Louisville game. They're playing at home, fell down 25-7 to in that football game. I really like the way the Scarlet Knights have come out. They've been poised. They played solidly on both sides of the football, and I think Greg Schiano would be very happy to go in the locker room with the seven-point lead. Slayton now, David, split wide as a receiver. And third and ten, Brown finds his man complete for a first down at the 26-yard line. Tito Gonzalez makes the reception, 127 to go in the half. Now that was an impressive ball from Jarrett Brown. Flush to his right. He's going to take a little bit off this throw. Drops it in over the underneath defender, Derek Roberson, the cornerback. That's a pretty ball when you can drop it in over an underneath defender and in front of the safety. Slayton splits out again as a receiver. Brown runs it into the boundary. Derek Brown moving the pile. Gets another first down. That's how far he moved it. Down to the 16-yard line. Close to it anyway. A little premature, maybe a yard short, under a minute to go in the half. Well, Mountaineer is going to call a timeout. Nice use of the first of their last two timeouts. Not a lot of running room for the quarterback tonight for West Virginia. Jarrett Brown taking the seam and using some strength to get close to the first down markers. But Mark, when you talk about the Mountaineers and their spread offense, the ability to, to spring Slayton and Patrick White. Tonight it's Jarrett Brown at the quarterback position, but what's so tough for defenses, college defenses, they want to outnumber you at the line of scrimmage. They always want to bring an extra man, but when you can run your quarterback, you gain an extra blocker. Now all of a sudden you can't be outnumbered at the line of scrimmage. That's part of the magic of this Rich yeah. Rodriguez spread offense. He's tinkered with it over the years since the time he started with it at Glenville State and uh, really done some wonderful things. And, you know, you look into the eyes of Jarrett Brown. We saw Pat White listening in on the huddle a few moments ago. Get the feeling that I've seen this movie before where 
one guy comes in for another guy as it pertains to West Virginia. Adam Bednarik was a starting quarterback a little over 12 months ago, gave way to Pat White and his subsequent rise. I'm not saying that this is a Wally Pitt story in the making now, but hey, who knows with Brown, the way he came out, especially on that opening drive. Second down and one coming up now for West Virginia from the 17-yard line. Got to get to the 16 for the first down. Slayton, short of the first down. Might have got, just gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Jason McCordy making the stop on the play. And the Mountaineers are going to be forced to burn that last time out. I thought Brown might want to get them up to the line of scrimmage, but they saved the seconds. And now the Mountaineers are going to be have, have to be very conscious of the clock. No timeouts left the rest of the way here Rutgers. in the first half. Yeah, Rutgers with two. Well, here's the answer, folks. Uh, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Aflac! Uh, Pat White leads all NCAA quarterbacks this season, 17 rushing touchdowns. The answer? I didn't have it. I'll be uh, honest. Amos Zaraway <laughs> would be <laughs> my guess. Ira Eric Rogers, 21 of them back in 1919. Yeah, well, he was in the same mold as Amos Saraway. He was just, it was just way before his time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, it's a wing yeah. T, right? That's low to the ground, right low anyway. center of gravity. Yeah, it's a wing T, man. I mean, what, we got, go! we've got some people down in the truck that are just dealing out. I know. Brutal Affleck question. I was thinking a little Major Harris, maybe. I don't know. 48 seconds to go here in the first half on a very crisp and cool, unseasonably cool night in Morgantown, West Virginia. Third down and one coming up, and the Mountaineers are out of timeouts. Rutgers scored on their opening drive of the ball game with a touchdown and then followed up with a field goal. Third and short, Brown gonna run it. Looks like he got the first down crossing that line. But they're out of timeouts. Thompson made the stop for Rutgers. And that's what made it critical to pick up the first down on that play because the clock stops on the first down. Jared Brown doesn't have to hurry here. He'll wait for the referee behind him to blow the ball ready for play. And then you go out, go on about your business. First and 10, Brown gonna pass. Up in the air and incomplete. And there's a flag down. Brandon Miles was the intended receiver on the play. Thompson and Green were in the area to break it up. But let's try and figure out what this flag is all about. Yeah, I think Thompson and Green arrived early. The contact came before the ball arrived. And this crew may be talking over whether the ball was catchable. I certainly thought it was. Either that or it didn't appear to might. be tipped at the line of scrimmage. Oh, they might be talking about a deflection, but we didn't see a deflection with the naked eye. There's no flag. The ball was tipped. There's no pass interference. Second down. Well, Jarrett Brown delivering the ball. Yeah, the ball was tipped. Okay. I'd say it was tipped. Yeah, Devron Thompson got it. I mean, that, you can't call a tip on that play. The, con the contact came before the ball arrived. It was tipped by both the defender and Miles. Second and ten now for Brown. And he's sacked. Back at the 15-yard line by Ramil Meekins. West Virginia's got to hurry here. And yeah, they don't have any timeouts remaining. The clock running. Now that was one of the toughest calls I've seen to pick up the flag on that pass interference call. Yeah, it sure was, and Brown spikes it to stop the clock. With 17 seconds to go, Devron Thompson tipped the ball. I mean, when you call a deflection, it's a deflection you know, between the quarterback and the receiver. This ball is deflected right as the ball arrives. And the contact came from behind by Green. I don't think you pick up the flag in that situation. That's a tough break for West Virginia. McAfee in now to attempt the field goal from 32 yards out. 
He's already hit one tonight from 38. And Rutgers is going to try and put him on ice. And Timeout. Won't be too difficult. Rutgers. With a 30 degree temperature down in the field. And getting cooler by the moment. Mark Jones, David Norrie, and Stacy Dales down to the field. 17 seconds to go in the first half. Rutgers has led the entire way. Rich Rodriguez's team trying to bounce back from the bitter disappointment of last week. A home loss, 24-19 against South Florida. And a lot of distractions for this West Virginia team over the course of the week. The letdown of the South Florida loss. They get knocked out of the BCS title picture. Yeah, they win last week, Mark, against South Florida. Even if they don't win the Big East, I really believe that's a team that the BCS is going to be interested in. They get into a BCS game. Hey, that's what it's come to now here in Morgantown, where the locals are a little irate at the fact that, oh, we're not going to be in a BCS game. What's going on? I mean, they get spoiled pretty quickly here, yet they register back-to-back 10-win -back seasons, a win tonight, and they would be 10-2 and two on the year with a chance to go 11-2 and two with a bowl victory. Well, let's face it, high expectations coming into this year. Not exactly a daunting uh, non-conference schedule. Maryland was the, the toughest test, and, and Maryland turned out to be a pretty darn good football team, but a lot of the prognosticators had West Virginia in the national title game, and that was based very strongly on the schedule strength. The Big East Conference turned out to be a lot stronger than, than most of the experts thought going into the year. 32-yard field goal attempt. McAfee. He drills this one through to cut the Rutgers lead to four points with 13 seconds to go now in the first half. Well, tomorrow night, be sure to catch the 2006 Bowl Selection Special on ESPN at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. It's also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or your satellite provider today. For more information, log on to ESPN. Com. Rutgers continues to be uh, really the warm and fuzzy feel-good story in college football this year. A little more than a half away should they hang on of making it to a BCS Bowl. Two and nine in Chiano's first year, followed by one and eleven, five and seven, four and seven. Then last year, David, the big breakthrough at seven and yeah. five, and they go to the inside bowl. Yeah, they turned the corner, and, and you look back to 2001, Greg Ciano's first year at Rutgers, West Virginia beat them here in Morgantown 80-7. to <laughs> The last six games here in Morgantown, Rutgers has lost by an average of 42 points, and I think they have gotten themselves acclimated tonight very well here. Four-point lead, they should be taking that lead into the locker room and a lot to be decided in the second half here. Remember, West Virginia with the win. They probably get into the Gator Bowl. And Rutgers, so much more riding. They're either in a BCS game, Mark Jones, with the win tonight. They fall to the Texas Bowl if they lose. It has been a historic year for the Scarlet Knights. Split kick. Coming down at about the 28. And Corcoran running it out of bounds. But a year first for the Scarlet Knights. Top 10 ranking, 10 consecutive weeks being ranked. The win over Louisville, in which they came back after trailing double digits by 17 points. And that's the end of the first half of play, and let's go down to Stacy. Coach, what's been the key to keeping West Virginia out of your end zone? Well, I think the kids are playing very hard. West Virginia's doing some things that uh, adjust into what we're doing. It's going back and forth. It's, uh, it's a bunch of good football players out there. How do you guys need to start the third quarter? Well, you know, we need, to, we need to keep moving the ball. We've moved it. We've kind of made some mistakes that we can't afford to make because they're a good defensive team. What's the key offensively specifically? Well, I think, I think we were throwing the ball, right? You know, Mike's got hit a little more than he has all season. So hopefully we can come back, protect him, and get the ball down the field. All right, thanks, Coach. Mark? All right, thanks a lot, Stacy. Greg Schiano, a Jersey guy. We're at halftime. Schiano figures it's better to make tracks than following them. Let's go to Reese Davis for the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. All right, Mark, tight game there. Rutgers trying to win a spot in a BCS game. Louisville could get a share of the Big East title and hope for a little West Virginia help tonight. Cardinals taking on UConn. Brian sold. Have 200 college football. This is another one. Rutgers with a chance to go to a BCS game, too. They're up on West Virginia by four.
your final expenses. Call now for free information and a free gift. Call toll-free 1-800-704-6031 to receive free information and a free gift. Call 1-800-704-6031 or please visit our website at colonialpen.com. Call now. Every time this season, Carolina... Under the lights on Mountaineer Field here on the banks of the Monongahela, West Virginia, the home team led by Rich Rodriguez facing Brett Shiano's crew trailing right now. 10 to 6, Rutgers with the lead. Mark Jones along with David Norris, Stacey Dales down in the field. Cool, chilly night here in Morgantown. A surprise starter, a quarterback for West Virginia. Pat White hurt with the turf toe and the ankle injury. Jarrett Brown came in, kind of gave you a mixed bag at the start. Well, he did, but he's shown ability to move the football with his feet. He's thrown the ball well at times. Not big numbers in the first half, but I think he's getting more and more comfortable as his football game on, goes on. You see him miss a couple balls there early. Goes about six foot five, 220 pounds, has a strong throwing arm. And Jared Brown is going to have to have success down the football field. He's going to have to hit some balls to loosen up Rutgers at the line of scrimmage. On the other side of things, Mike Teal, the Rutgers quarterback, he opened up the game 5 for 5. He's cooled off. He's only hit one pass since the 5 for 5 start. And so many times this year, David, people have said, make Mike Teal beat you. Well, that's what he did, at least on the opening drive. Subsequently, he has cooled off a little bit. You saw Underwood with a catch there. He has been taken off with a leg injury, not expected back. But now what do you see happening in the second half? Rutgers uh, trying to do what they've never done before in a couple of ways. Win here where they are 0-14 all time at Mountaineer Field. And two win their first ever Big East Championship. Well, both of these offenses are so good running the ball, moving the ball on the ground. I think it's going to be a matter of which quarterback can hit some plays in their passing games, which quarterbacks can take care of the football, play error-free. This looks like a football game, Mark Jones. It's going to go right down to the wire. Greg Schiano uh, ushering in a new age of winning football at Rutgers. A couple of yards to Drenad. Drenad spins out of harm's way. And a nice return out beyond the 30-yard line. And a good start for West Virginia here in the third period and downstairs to Stacy. Well, Mark, I just had a chance to ask Coach Rodriguez for West Virginia why no Pat White on that bad ankle. He said he's just not 100%. He didn't feel like he would be effective for us. He thought he would hurt us more than help us. And I said, well, how about Jarrett Brown? How do you find the end zone with Jarrett Brown? He said he's just got to relax. Too many jitters early, and we have to execute, not executing, guys. Interesting. I wonder if the Big East Championship was on the line in this game. Pat That's White a great question. Started. That's a great question. And with the BCS bid on the line, we might have seen Pat White in this game. Slayton on first down, stopped up near the line of scrimmage as we take a look at the cogent and pertinent numbers from the first half of play here in Morgantown. West Virginia with 85 yards on the ground. Rutgers started off in their first couple of series moving the ball well on the ground. and. Uh, Rutgers with the edge and total yardage. Scarlet Knights with only 28 yards total in the second quarter. West Virginia stiffened as a defense. Second down and 10 coming up for the Mountaineers. Brown hands it off. Slayton still on his feet. And Slayton with a first down into Rutgers territory at the 48-yard line brought down by Courtney Green. Back about 36, Courtney Green. Well, Steve Slayton, he's not a big back. And everybody knows about his speed and his ability in space. But what a lot of people don't know is he's a very powerful runner, very physical. Won the Iron Mountaineer Award in weight training in the offseason. And he has the ability to run through tackles. Sets up a first down and 10 near midfield. Picked up 21 on that play. This is Bruce. And Bruce got back to the line of scrimmage. You know, getting back to uh, Slayton a little bit, it was in this game last year. He had his big breakout game against Rutgers, 139 yards in all with a touchdown. That kind of set the table for what was to come for Steve Slayton. Coming into this game, the number two rusher in the nation. Second and ten. Brown open. 
Duncan has his man. Tao. Jallo with a nice move all the way down to the two yard line. First and goal, Mountaineers, a 48 yard pickup by Jallo on the catch. Well, Jallo was lined up in the slot on a seam route. And this is a beautiful job by Jared Brown to deliver this football with timing. Beats the safety and a nice job after the catch. First and goal, the backs lining up out of the eye. Schmidt, the fullback. Nothing doing up the middle. Owen Schmidt stopped up by Rankhart. Owen Schmidt, an interesting story, transfer from Wisconsin River Falls. It was all conference in that league, but wanted to get to big time D1 football. Had a successful year last year. He's nicked up a little bit, coming off an injury. Second and goal coming up. Slayton the deep back out of the eye. And flags down on the play. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Number 65, five yard penalty, remains second down. Now Rich Rodriguez forced to go with his backup quarterback, a redshirt freshman, and he talked about the jitters that Brown experienced in the first half. One of the dangers you run, especially down on the goal line, new quarterback, new cadence for the offensive line. You tend to pick up a couple of those five yards. That was their first penalty of the night. Four receivers in on this formation, second and goal. Brown going to keep it himself. Brown, no signal yet. They're going to mark it down short of the end zone. About a foot and a half from the end zone. Third and goal coming up. Uh, Brown, what strikes you about him when you look at him on the hoof, six foot four, 220 pounds, and in the first half ran through a couple tackles very impressively. Looked to me like he got pretty close to the goal line on that run. Schmidt and Slayton out of the eye. Third and goal, West Virginia. Slayton over the top. Touchdown. Steve Slayton playing with that injured right wrist that will require surgery at the end of the football season. Hung on to it that time. And now with the extra point for McAfee, West Virginia now leading for the first time in this football game, 13 to 10, and doing it behind Jarrett Brown and Slayton, their All-American tailback. We'll be back after this. This telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. The fans here with reason to cheer. Finally, home team with the lead. After that, Steve Slayton one-yard touchdown plunge. Slayton with his 15th rushing touchdown this season. Let's see if they kick it away from Willie Foster, last year's special teams player of the year in the Big East. This one's going to be Young instead. And Young got rocked back at the 19-yard line, falling forward to the 20. One more look at that touchdown run by Slate. Yeah, keep an eye on the All-American, the center, Dan Moses, and Sheffy at right guard. They get two, three yards deep into the end zone. And then the effortless leap by Slate. What an athlete. First down and 10. Let's see how Rutgers responds. Mike Teal has done it before, but he has been cold in the latter part of the second quarter. This is Rutgers' first possession of the second half. And 
it off to Ray Rice, and he got about three yards, brought down by Jay Henry. I think that uh, West Virginia now a little momentum on their side after that Slayton run. Well, these offenses see defenses week in and week out. Just commit to the run, commit to stopping these two talented rushing offenses, and when you get a guy like Jarrett Brown coming in for Pat White, hitting some balls down the field. It loosens things up for Slayton. And I think we're going to see Mike Teal have to open it up in the passing game as well for Rutgers to create room for Rice and Leonard. We have an injured player down in the field for Rutgers. That's Jeremy Zuda, starting left tackle. There he is. That Rutgers offensive line has done a wonderful job most of the year springing loose. Those gaping holes for the likes of Ray Rice and Brian Leonard. Azut has been such a key. The right tackle, Sosa at left tackle. The tackles up front for Rutgers have been such a strength. Keep an eye on Zuda. Taking a look back. And he got rolled up. Well, you hate to see that. Zuda, one of... Uh, Several New Jersey kids on the roster. Greg Schiano convincing a lot of those players to eschew the likes of Penn State and other teams in the area and stay home. We'll be back after this. The Panthers rumble with the Eagles. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by the Ridgeline from Honda. Separate yourself from the herd. And the Kotura Collection from Seiko. It's your watch that tells most about who you are. Suda taken off the field moments ago. Mike Gilmartin coming in to take that tackle spot on the offensive line for Rutgers. Second down coming up for the Scarlet Knights. Cordell Young in a tailback. That's Leonard in motion. Leading the way for Young. Cuts it in between the tackles. Makes out to the 28-yard line. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dales down to the field. Rutgers taking on West Virginia. West Virginia has never lost to Rutgers here. They're 14-0 against the Scarlet Knights all time on Mountaineer Field. Rutgers with the win tonight will win its first ever Big East title. Let's look at some of the pertinent numbers so far. Steve Slayton with a touchdown run a few moments ago. Rutgers trying to get something going on the ground. I'll let you know just a few moments ago, the Florida Arkansas saw game going final. The Gators winning. Third down and two coming up. Little bubble screen complete. And Britt brought down behind the line of scrimmage short of the first down. Nice stop by Wicks and Hathaway. Now the Mountaineers are really crowding the line of scrimmage. And, and they play with three safeties in that 3-3-5 alignment. It gives you the ability to bring safeties from either side. Tremendous balance. And they are pursuing the football. Only gave up 28 yards in the second quarter. They've carried that momentum here into the second half. Rivers back deep on his own 30-yard line. Radigan averaging 40 yards a punt tonight. It's off a high punt. Not that long. Rivers probably wishing that he hadn't called for the fair catch. But they'll have good starting field position on this, their second possession of the third quarter. 31-yard punt by Radigan. Boy, what a surprising and compelling Saturday it's been today. The big upset out in Los Angeles. The Bruins upset USC, snapping that losing streak against the Trojans. And well, that really spoils the plans for USC, who had been pretty much picked to play against Ohio State in the championship game. A 9-6 win for Wake Forest over Georgia Tech. And I mean, tell me, how do you sort out which team should appear against Ohio State, Michigan <laughs> or Florida? That's why the BCS system doesn't work, because you cannot tell me you can pick between those two teams and say definitively one of those two deserve to be in that game. I'm with you on that one. Slayton on the carry. Let's go back to Reese Davis. Ron Thompson. 
All right, guys, and Florida is now in the house with their argument to be able to play for the BCS national title. Casey Dick of Arkansas throwing for the end zone, picked off by Ryan Smith. The Gators have put it away, 38-28. Now they wait and hope. Florida's only loss on the season on the road at Auburn. Certainly they have a strong argument to play for the championship. Pass complete to Slate. Several one-loss teams with good arguments. Well, and, and you look at Michigan losing by three points on the road. On the road against the number one team in the country, Ohio State. So they have an argument that that was a quality loss. And then you talk to people down in Gainesville and they say, wait a second, why are you going to give Michigan another shot against Ohio State when we had one of the toughest schedules in the country? We had to play an additional game in that SEC championship against a team like Arkansas that was so well loaded down the stretch. That's why you got to decide it in a playoff. Third and three coming up for the Mountaineers. Brown under heat. Got it off in time. Forward progress is going to be marked up at the 40-yard line to Miles. Brandon Miles making the catch for the first down. Uh, Miles was working against McCord. He came back to the ball to help out his young redshirt freshman quarterback. And watch the size and strength of Jared Brown. Had to get up over defenders in the pocket to deliver that ball to the outside. That was a heck of a play by the young quarterback. Use his size, as you mentioned. 6'3 out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Fumble. And Slayton appears to have fallen on the loose ball. The Mountaineers fortunate to recover it. Yeah, and when you play against this West Virginia team, you got to do two things. First of all, you have to get used to their speed in a hurry. Now, Pat White not playing tonight. Slayton, of course, a tailback. A mix-up in the backfield, but number two against West Virginia, you got to hope for a, a sloppy ball handling night from the Mountaineers. When West Virginia has lost this year, the South Florida and the Louisville turnovers by the Mountaineers have really played into the mix. Second and 16 now for Brown. Out of the backfield complete. That is to Bruce, and Bruce run out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. Ten yards to go coming up for the first for West Virginia. You mentioned this offense and the timing involved, and especially with this offense, David, it's a lot of moving parts. You introduce a new quarterback into the equation. What's your read on that? Well, it's a big load, and it's not only the timing and the execution, but there's a big load on Jarrett Brown before the snap of the football. Rich Rodriguez, a lot of the checks come down from the press box. They're constantly in the no-huddle offense. That is a lot to handle for a young quarterback in a big game. On third and ten, a little heat coming from Rutgers. Brown with an alley, and then some. Brown! Touchdown! Ho! Took it downtown! Rich Rodriguez tell this quarterback great play. <laughs> I mean, he kicked it into a different gear. Yeah, and that's a danger you run as a defense when you're playing man-to-man. -man. The quarterback pulls down the football, and you got defenders in the secondary chasing their man-to-man -man responsibilities. Jarrett Brown is looking at the back of Rutgers jerseys as he heads down the football field. They're going to review this because watch where his knee touches. Let's see whether his knee is down or whether he's out of bounds. His knee might have touched there, but it's got to be indisputable video evidence. Or did he get his hand down and hand walk into the end zone? This is a better angle. And just stretching the ball out from that angle, tough to tell. But I will tell you this much, that was some kind of effort by Jarrett Brown. 
as he got down inside the five yard line. And how about the decision making as he ex exited the pocket? Boy, the receivers appeared to run everybody off on their routes. And like you said, David, he was looking at the back of a bunch of Rutgers jerseys the whole way. Picked up some blocks, too, and especially defense. from Steve Slayton. That's what scares defensive coordinators when you have a big athletic quarterback. Three-step drop That's out of the shotgun. On the field. Touchdown stands. The touchdown's going to stand. I like to see Jarrett Brown handle the football a little more securely. I saw some air there, carrying it like a loaf of bread, but what a play. Are you going to nitpick like that? <laughs> <laughs> On a cold night like this. Well, that information, <laughs> that information from Coach Rodriguez will be delivered with a smile in film review. It sure was. Don't want to break the young cold that much. Extra point is good from McAfee, and West Virginia has surged ahead here in the third quarter with a couple of touchdowns. Can Rutgers answer the charge by Brown and the Mountaineers? There's a Big East title on the line when we come back. Whether it's fired. One more look at that 40-yard burst for the touchdown. Partner, he wasn't touched until near the goal line. Well, Jared Brown, this is crisp decision-making to pull the football down. Go ahead and freeze it right there. Man-to-man -man coverage down the field, across the board, and now it's just Jarrett Brown against the free safety, one-on-one. Four-five speed, 220 pounds, and he ran through a couple tackles inside the five-yard line. Doing his best to Major Harris or Rashid Marshall impersonation. Jarrett Brown with a touchdown sprint. His third this season in a career long. There's Young on the kickoff return. Cut down at the 28 yard line. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Mark, Big 12 championship game. Oklahoma had a 14 0 lead on Nebraska late in the first half. Short yardage formation. Zach Taylor finding his tight end wide open. Hunter Tifa Taylor with the touchdown grab. Center still up by a touch. All right, Rutgers first and 10 from the 28-yard line playing in arguably the biggest game in school history. If they win tonight, they would get the BCS bid. And right now, to stumble, Louisville would get the BCS bid. Louisville rooting for the Mountaineers right now. Teal trying to get it all back right here, and he has a man. Brown. Oh, he got it all. Back at Teal you big time. It's complete for Tim Brown. 72 yards in a burst. Mike Teal is 35 and 2 as a starter. Don't think for a moment that he doesn't have incredible resolve. The type of resolve to bring his team back like he did earlier this year with that 11 play 80 yard drive against Louisville for the big win. Nito with the extra point. Flags down. That is the symbol for chopping wood. That is their mantra. That is their credo. You see the hand motion, the right hand going into the left. It's going to go against the Mountaineers. Offsides on the defense. Number 19. Penalties decline. Try is good. That touchdown pass was Rutgers' longest of the season. A career long pass by Mike Teal, 72 yards. Well, and they brought Timmy Brown in, their home run threat. The fastest wide receiver on this roster. Teal back five steps, got the ball up on time. And Timmy Brown just absolutely runs away from Larry Williams. That is impressive speed and maybe even a better throw from Mike Teal. Talk about Mike Teal and all the key plays that he's made. None might be bigger than that one so far with plenty of football left. You talk about deflating an opponent in one play. 
Lead back down to three points. Williams right there on the bench, beat on the last play for the touchdown. Now that's the risk that these defenses run. You know, both of these defenses, they know they don't want to come out and watch the run games respectively go up and down the field, so you have to take some chances on the outside. Williams was locked up one-on-one -on -one with the backup receiver, but a number two receiver that has quite a bit of speed, and Mike Teal turned this game around on a dime with that throw on the go route. Right, Chiano has told his team, keep your eyes on the process, not the prize. It's how we do things, guys. Don't think about the final destination all the time. Take care of the little things. Right on, on the return. Brought down at the 25-yard line. So Jared Brown coming back onto the field real quick. Did he call a one-play touchdown, a drive? And look at Raynaud now uh, limping off the field for the Mountaineers. He's one of their top receivers. Well, tomorrow night, be sure to catch the 2006 Bull Special Selection Special on ESPN at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. That's bowl, the Bowl Selection Special on ESPN. That special just got a whole lot <laughs> more interesting. Louisville Cardinals, interesting spectators on the sidelines tonight watching this game. Winning earlier today against Connecticut. They're going to whistle this play dead. If Rutgers loses, Louisville dead ball. wins the Big East. The layup game on the offense. Number 16, five-yard penalty remains first down. Against Brown. And Brown has done a nice job both with his arm and his feet. Four minutes to go in the third quarter, though, Mark Jones. I think his decision-making, taking care of the football. Can he take this ball game deep into the fourth quarter without turning the ball over? Ball security at the quarterback position is going to be a key. He's going to take off with this one himself. There's a flag down. And Brown is brought down at the 25-yard line. That's going to be a hold against Stanchuk. Mountaineers penalized once again. Holding on the offense. Number 62. 10 yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Replay first down. Well, coming into the evening, the thought was that the winner of the game here, if Rutgers would win, they would go to the uh, Orange Bowl. There's a look at the tie-ins after the BCS games are selected. Who goes where? The thinking was that if Rutgers lost that they might be headed to the Texas Bowl. Now West Virginia with a win tonight. They play on New Year's Day. The Gator Bowl. They'd have to be delighted playing on New Year's Day. Rutgers with a bigger prize in their sights. First and 25 for the Mountaineers. Prior to snap, false start on the offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's against Figner, starting tackle. And you have to live with this. A redshirt freshman getting a surprise start. Now they're going to go to first and 30. Jarrett Brown getting limited reps throughout the season. Got quite a bit more during the week, but execution at the line of scrimmage can be a problem when you substitute a quarterback in for an experienced guy like Pat White. You don't want to back up your first-time starter this much. He hands it off to Slayton. And Slayton runs it out to the 13-yard line where he's tackled by Thompson. Boy, when you watch Slayton, uh, he is so nimble and so quick through the creases. Really going to be interesting to see the way that NFL an NFL franchise will deploy him a tailback. So gifted and so effortless the way he moves with the football. Are you going to send him off already? He's only a sophomore. <laughs> oh, I'm saying down the line. Plenty of time to get some more done at the college level. Just projecting. <laughs> there he is trying to project, and he fumbles again. 
They're going to whistle it down. They're going to whistle it down. And you have to come back to the original premise we made at the top of the show. Steve Slayton is playing with an injured right wrist. A wrist that is going to require surgery at the end of the season. He has had some very untimely fumbles during the course of the season. One in the Louisville game, which proved to be very egregious. But they're going to rule this down. Uh, last week, let's take a look here. Wow, that might be reversed. Just a matter of whether there was a whistle. They got to look at that in the booth, don't they? You think. Third and 22, Brown down the seam, and it's complete. Tallow again with another big catch. Picked up 22 yards, but it's still fourth down coming up. Yeah, West Virginia's going to be short. Tallow tried to roll forward to pick up the yards, but couldn't. And you know, on that fumble, you can't review that fumble, Mark. New rule in the NFL. Whistle on the field. Ball is loose. But they can go ahead and give that ball to the defense now in the NFL with the rule change. Not so at the college level. The whistle stopped that play. And Slayton definitely, definitely let go of the football before he hit the turf. Here's the punt. And Willie Foster still looking for an opportunity to make a play. Has to call for the fair catch. All the way back at the 17-yard line. A 49-yard punt, nothing on the return. Mike Teal got back six points on one 72-yard throw last time. One more look at the fumble. Yeah, I think the ball definitely was, was coming out. It was definitely coming out. Slayton got hit on the elbow. The problem is, at the college level, if they call the ball dead, and they can't reverse it, and, you know, this became so frustrating at the NFL level that they finally changed the rule. And, and if it was clear that the defense was making the recovery, they give it to the deep. They give it to the defense on the recovery now in the NFL. Not so at the college level. First down and 10. 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ray Rice trying to put his stamp on the game. And Rice pushed out of bounds right near the first down marker. And a late flag coming on that far side of the field at the 33. 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Face mask on the defense. Number six, five-yard penalty. Full result, first down. And the good news is that Zuda's back in the game blocking for Ray Rice. There's the face mask. And we've seen some critical decisions by officials this year. Now, this is a BCS title on the line for Rutgers. Hard to overstate how big a game this is for that program. And they just had a touchdown taken away on the fumble by Slate. First down and 10. Nice hole once again for Young. Young doing a nice job supplementing and complimenting the running of Ray Rice. Brought down by Boo McLee. Picked up seven that time. Yeah, you hit a go route for a touchdown to Brown. And look how quickly it opens up things for you in the ground game. Teal, with the ability to get the ball down the field, that's going to continue to create opportunities for Ray Rice and company. Greg Schiano and his crew from the banks of the Raritan River in New Jersey 15 minutes away from a BCS bid, but a long way to go. The Mountaineers are trying to stand in their path on senior day. Back with the fourth quarter right after this. for the start of the fourth quarter. West Virginia leading by three, 20 to 17. Rutgers with a win tonight. will get a BCS bid and win their first ever Big East title. Who would have ever thought at the start of the year, the road to the Big East title would run through the Jersey Turnpike, exit 19, 
and follow through Route 18 North. Second and three coming up. Young in the backfield. Teal with a bootleg. Complete. Out of the 45 to, to his tight end, Clark Harris. You figured that at some point he would be a factor in this game. He's their leading receiver. Well, there are a lot of talented tight ends across the country. Matt Spath at Minnesota. You got Greg Olson down at Miami. Zach Miller down in Tempe, Arizona. I think Clark Harris is going to be a first-day pick in the draft. He's not only a great pass catcher, soft hands, but he really takes pride in the way he works at the line of scrimmage. An exceptional block. First down and 10 from the 45. Ray Rice on the handoff. And Rice got about two yards. One thing about Ray Rice, he gets stronger as the game goes on. And I'll tell you something about his selflessness. Earlier this year, he had a chance to set a school record with eight consecutive 100-yard games rushing in a game against Navy. He was at 93 yards, and head coach Greg Schiano took him out of the ball game, as he is right now. And before Schiano could explain, hey, I want to save you, he said, no problem, coach. I just want to win. No big deal. I want to see a little more out of that, like, <laughs> that type of deal out of you, Mark Jones. Uh, second down and eight. Leonard came into the ball game with tailback. Clark Harris on the reception once again. For more on Clark Harris, let's go downstairs to Stacy. Well, Mark, I talked to Mike Teal, and I asked Mike, as the game wears on and the pressure mounts, who are you looking to throw the ball to? We know Ray Rice can run fluidly, but who are you looking to throw it to? And he said, well, I like to catch Brian Leonard with a short pass out of the backfield. And then that guy you guys just spoke of, Harris, he's just solid, Teal told me. And he's always valuable catching the ball anywhere and taking contact. Look for those guys to catch down the stretch here. Yeah, didn't put up eye-popping stats this year, but played good football. Third and three coming up for the Scarlet Knights here. Teal, complete underneath for the first down and then some. And a jarring hit put on Kenny Britt. But he picked up the first down, they moved the chains. Kenny Britt is, boy, in the last three, four games has become a huge factor offensively. He picked up 18 yards that time. Well, and this was a just a nice job by Mike Teal to check. Go ahead and roll it, guys. He's going to check two deep routes down the left side of the football field, and then he comes down to a third choice in rhythm with poise. We're really seeing Mike Teal come of age in November. He's hit his last five in a row, David. First and ten. Rice trying to get to the edge. Out of the bounds at the 16-yard line. And remember, Mike Teal doing a job at quarterback for Rutgers, but his counterpart, Pat White, who was supposed to start, did not start, has not played because of an ankle sprain and turf toe. White, such a valuable part of that West Virginia offense, ran for over 1,000 yards this year, passed for over 1,500 yards, completed about 67% of his passes, who would have ever thought that West Virginia, frankly, would be in the lead at this point of the game without Pat White in the game? Well, I know the Scarlet Knights are, are excited. They didn't have to see Pat White tonight. That's Second. an understatement. Second and six on the toss, Ray Rice. And they swing him out nicely at the 17-yard line. Eric Wicks making the stop on the play. Eric Wicks is such a key for this defense. He's really the best playmaker. They use him a lot in their blitz package. Runs extremely well. And this defense is so well equipped to take care of running offenses because of those safeties on either side. Their ability to bring pressure from different spots on the field. That unconventional 3-3-5 alignment. Doing a nice job, especially against the rush. Third and seven coming up. Underneath complete. And it appears as if Townsend may have gotten the first down with that last gasp effort and lunge. 
James Townsend, one of the only receivers with experience. The transfer from Iowa, doing a nice job, and they move the chains. It's first and goal for Rutgers. Now you go out to a college football practice, and you hear wide receiver coaches talking about getting north and south after a catch, splitting defenders. This is just a superb job by Townsend to run through three tacklers and move the chains for the Scarlet Knights. First and goal, Ray Rice is the lone back. They toss it into the near side. And Rice is brought down. Maybe lost a yard on the play. Rice came into this game, the fourth leading rusher in the nation. Ran for almost 1,500 yards on the season with 17 touchdowns, 135 a game. He's a treat. He reminds me a little bit of Greg Hill. He does, that low center of gravity, great initial burst, runs through tackles, but it hadn't been easy. I mean, Ray Rice, one of the top five running backs statistically in the country, but he's operating against one of the five toughest defenses in the country to move the ball on the ground against. That's Britt in motion. Teal, complete underneath to Britt. Stays on his feet, absorbing the ball, but pushed out of bounds at about the six-yard line. They are really jacking each other down there. They are bringing some knock. <laughs> There's some hitting going on. Well, the best routes against man-to-man -man defenses are routes that are crossing patterns, and that gives wide receivers a chance to run away from man-to-man -man defenders. Teal's done a nice job of looking at routes down the field and then coming underneath to those crossing routes but delivering the ball with accuracy. Third and goal. Leonard and Rice both split out as receivers. And it's complete to Britt, but he's short of the first down. And in comes the field goal unit as Jeremy Eel will come onto the field to try and kick the game-tying field goal. And it looked like Mike Teal predetermined that he was going to come underneath again on that route. And the Mountaineers a great job in the linebacker court and jump the route. This one's going to come from about 21 yards out. He's made so many big ones this year, none bigger than that game-winning field goal against Louisville. This coming from a pretty sharp angle. No problem for Jeremy Edo. They call him the judge. Final verdict still to come. Steve Slayton has done so much for this program over the last two years. Trying to bring it home for 25 seniors when we come back. Welcome back, everyone, to Morgantown, West Virginia. Steve Slayton with 91 yards rushing. He came in averaging well over that, 143, and uh, Ray Rice well below his average. But that's what happens in games of this magnitude. Tighten the screws just a little bit more. Well, that's what happens when defenses are selling out against the run. Getting safeties up on the line of scrimmage forcing quarterbacks to make plays down the football field. The yards don't come easy. Raynaud and Rivers back for this kickoff. It'll be Raynaud at the two. Raynaud still on his feet. And Raynaud with a nice kickoff return into Rutgers territory. Chris Davis, an impressive run by Raynaud. Back to you. That it was, Mark. The BCS is in chaos, thanks to UCLA's upset of USC. So what now that the Trojans are out of the title picture? Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2, we will have a bowl selection special to determine how should these voters evaluate Florida's season against Michigan's? Who should play for the national title? We'll break it all down for you, 8 o'clock Eastern on Sunday night. All right, Reese. First down and 10 for West Virginia after that 51-yard kickoff return. Steve Slayton on the carry. And Slayton down to the 39. 
Green made the stop on the play. We were talking a little BCS during the commercial. What about Boise State? I know they're 12-0. <laughs> now, come on, you got to play the schedule. you got to play a schedule now. <laughs> I mean, they play, granted, they... Wisconsin! They had a, a, a win against the Pac-10 team, but... <laughs> but uh, I'd say Louisville. If you're going to talk a one-loss team outside of Florida and outside of Michigan, Louisville posted a pretty darn good record this year, one loss, and, and a lot of teams saying if Louisville would have gone undefeated, they would have got into that national title game. Well, USC losing today against UCLA. Arkansas went down. You know, I... That's going to be interesting. You look at the, the rating... The television ratings for the Detroit area and down in Northwest Florida tomorrow on that selection, that selection special. Uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my case for Florida if I really had to. When you look at their strength of schedule, them being a one-loss team, well, you're gonna hear howling out of the Gainesville area if Michigan gets a second shot. But but how can you really determine which of those two teams gets to play in the game? Second and one coming up. First down is Owen Schmidt. Carries for about four on the play. Owen Schmidt is a load at about 250 pounds. Six foot three, a junior. Yeah, he is a load. And, you know, one last thought on that BCS. I've got a great way to determine which team gets into that game. Tell, yeah, that's a bit us. of a novel thought, Mark. Tell us. Determine it on the field of play. How about that? Oh, brand new concept. I think you're trying to tell me the BCS doesn't quite work. That works one, one out of every four years. First down and ten. Slayton stopped up near the line of scrimmage by Ramil Meekins. Let's take a look at the All-State Good Hands play of the game. And it came on that nice hookup between Jared Brown and Jallo. This is a big play that came early in the third quarter, set up the first of two touchdowns in the third period from West Virginia. So they get on second and 12 coming up. Jarrett Brown has gone the entire distance. Pat White out of the game. Did not play because of a sprained ankle and turf toe. Brown has his pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. And you see number 56, Eric Foster, making the chopping wood sign. There it is right there. He's the only junior who's one of four captains on that team. Yeah, it's hard to find an interior defensive lineman. And I'm talking across the country that has better numbers, better production than Eric Foster. Tackles behind the line of scrimmage, sacks. Third down and 12. Picked off at the 18. Thorpe. Thompson and Rutgers comes up with a huge defensive play with just under eight minutes to go in the ball game and a BCS bid on the line that's their 13th pick this season and their biggest so far. And Devron Thompson is going to drop back into coverage keep an eye on number 55 and he gets good depth. Gets a lot of depth retreating, reads the eyes of Jarrett Brown. Looked like Brown was looking down the field to Darius Renaud. And we talked about ball security. We talked about young quarterbacks taking care of the football. That's quite a play by a middle linebacker. A lot of middle linebackers at this level, pretty good inside a phone booth, good against the run, but not that good in space. Thompson proved that he could work against a pretty darn good slot receiver. That's Ray Nod that was shaken up on the play. And now with 7.57 to go, tie game, Rutgers looking to come back and go ahead. They've had so many close games, a five-point win against North Carolina to start the year, a two-point win against South Florida. Another comeback victory against Louisville when they were trailing by 18 in that game. First down and 10 from the 46. Ray Rice. Rice with a first down inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. And now we're going to keep it right here. Boy, I talked about Ray Rice getting better, progressively stronger as the game goes on. Here's evidence. Well, you look back to the Louisville game. 
The Rutgers trailed 20 to 5 to 7 in that football game. It was Ray Rice that took over the game in the fourth quarter with his will. 75 yards against the Cardinals, and he rips off a long one here against the Mountaineers. Cordell Young now in for Rice. Young cuts it up inside between the tackles, inside the 25. And now we check in with Reese Davis with the Sports Center 30 at 30 update. All right, Mark, story of the day in college football. USC knocked out of the national championship picture. UCLA knocks off the Trojans 13 to 9, giving Carl Durrell the most important victory as the Bruins head coach. The long-anticipated debut of Greg Oden of Ohio State, the big man, had a broken wrist, played against Valpo, got a double-double. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News constantly. All right, Reese, the second down and six coming up for Rutgers. Rice back in the ball game on the carry. Stopped up at about the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and about three to go. Mike Teal came out red hot. Made his first five passes good ones. All completions. Went stone cold towards the middle and latter part of the second quarter. But has picked up the pace once again here in the second half. Where he's eight of eight. Yeah, there was no doubt coming into this game. The Mountaineers with one of the very best defenses in the country stopping the run. And Mike Teal's not a guy that he has to win the game. But he has been very impressive in the second half. And the deep ball to Timmy Brown really was a momentum changer. Leonard is the lone back. He gets the call on third down. And he powers forward for the first down. Brian Leonard, the fifth-year senior, who passed up on Notre Dame and Penn State and other big schools, stuck with Rutgers because he's a man of his word trying to pay off on a vision that he had five years ago. Uh, he's a great dual threat back and running with power. The Scarlet Knights are very comfortable when they have the ball in the hands of Brian Leonard. And I can't say enough about his ability as a pass catcher out of the backfield. Over 200 receptions in his career at fullback for Rutgers. And it is wonderful the way that his mentored the youngster Ray Rice, the sophomore, who comes into the ball game right now. A great lightning and thunder combination. Actually, I guess you could call it lightning and lightning. <laughs> well, Leonard definitely is the stronger of the two runners, but but they both have a little bit of flash. Obviously, Rice is the true tailback, but Rice gives you quite a bit of pop in between the tackles. Interestingly enough, Leonard without a reception tonight. He has a streak of 45 consecutive games with a catch. First and 10. Rice on the carry. Stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. And they're already in field goal range for Jeremy Edo. Yeah. He's kicked some big ones, but none would be bigger than one which would lead to a win here. 20 to 20 with 5-10 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Rutgers intent on turning a seven-point play on this trip down the field and the clock becomes a factor as we tick inside five minutes both teams with a full complement of timeouts to work with look at this funky formation teal receiver screen leonard has his reception which keeps his streak alive and extends it now has 46 consecutive games with a catch. So this was a nice job by West Virginia. Specialty, look at the bunch formation at the top and the bottom. Three defenders at the bottom of the screen working against three wide receivers. Great pursuit and recognition by the Mountaineers. Tough to practice that during the week. <laughs> Third and seven coming up. Entered the back beside Teal. Into the end zone, and it's dropped. Townsend had it and couldn't squeeze it. And in comes the field goal unit on fourth down. They'll leave their BCS fates and fortunes on the toe of Ito. You couldn't ask for a better ball for Mike Teal. 
I mean, that is a ball from Mike Teal that has championship written all over it. You know. And look at the reaction of the quarterback, Teal, and his offensive lineman. Ito coming in to attempt this one from 31 yards out. It would give Rutgers the lead. No doubt about it. Jeremy Edel with another field goal, his third of the days, connected from 36, 21, and now 31. 355 away from a BCS bid. Can the defense do its job? We'll find out on the other side. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by T. Rowe Price. Mutual funds, IRAs, college savings from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. And ESPN Game Plan. Maximum college football. To order, call your pay-per-view provider or log on to ESPN.com. Search Game Plan. 3.55 to go. Rutgers that far away from a BCS bid. One more look at the touchdown that wasn't. You couldn't ask any more from Mike Teal. Double post routes at the top. Townsend is going to find the void between cornerback and safety. How about the timing and the accuracy on the throw? You have to put a little bit of mustard on that ball, some velocity to fit it in. And if the Scarlet Knights don't win this football game, you think they'll look back on that play for a while? Wow. James Townsend going to have a tough time forgetting that one. Ito to kick off. That's Raynaud for West Virginia. Along with Rivers back for this kickoff return. From the three, it's Raynaud. Looked like he got tripped up by his own man. Didn't make it out to the 20 and would be spotted about the 17. Time now for our Sharp equals image of the game. Ray Rice running right into our cameras, literally. End up a little sideways on the sidelines. David Durko. Okay. Hang in there, Dave. <laughs> 23 to 20. See what Jared Brown can do here. Making his first start. Brown sprinting, lunging forward. He's going to have a first down at the 29-yard line with 324 to go in the fourth. Well, the Mountaineers, week in, week out, they go exclusively no huddle. So this shouldn't take even Jared Brown, a redshirt freshman, out of his comfort zone. Plenty of time. They have timeouts. And don't be afraid to continue to use your feet. I think that Jared Brown, if he sticks with pulling the football down from time to time, that's going to help him on this clock drive. Last time out, he threw an interception into the arms of LeBron Thompson. Passes this time safely complete. Out to the 39-yard line to Jallo. And Jallo's forward progress is going to give him the first down near the 40. 2.55 to go in the fourth quarter. West Virginia moving the ball. They only need a field goal to tie. Uh, two confidence-building plays to open up the drive. First, the quarterback draw. Didn't like what he saw down the football field. Pulled it down, and then a nice, solid curl route. Ball to the outside to move the chain. Hey, Jared Brown not too bad today. 10 of 19, 164 yards. Surprise starter for the injured Pat White. He's out of the game with an ankle injury and turf toe. Not sure who that was to. Overshot his intended receiver, Jallo. That was a misfire. He had Jallo. He had Jallo working to the sideline. And Rich Rodriguez, if he could talk directly to his young quarterback right now, he'd say, hey, make sure we stay secure with the football. We can't turn the ball over on this drive. Don't take any risks. And when in doubt, pull the football down and use that six foot four, 220 pound frame that you've been using so successfully throughout the course of this football game. Second and 10 coming up. They've got to at least get into field goal range for McAfee. 
Brown incomplete underneath at the 43. Brown's intended pass. for and Steve Slayton with 227 to go. And remember, McAfee has a pretty strong leg. Their place kicker. He has a career long of uh, 51 yards. So if West Virginia doesn't pick up significant yards on this play with 227 left, I think they're going to be forced into a punt situation. They got to punt the ball away. Remember, they have three timeouts, so they may have to give the ball back to the Scarlet Knights and trust their defense. Big play coming up for Brown at quarterback here. Downfield complete. First down at the 36 yard line to Renan. With 2.18 to go. He threw a frozen rope that melted in Renan's arm. Yeah, and watch Brown's movement in the pocket. I'm telling you, he made a nice move stepping up and then delivers the ball on a line with the game on the line. That was a big throw. Into the boundary. It's Slayton, and Slayton is brought down to the 33. Came loose, but they're going to say he's down. Clock running under two minutes to go. Yeah, West Virginia doesn't have to hurry. This is a situation where you don't want to leave time on the clock for the Scarlet Knights. This time Slayton really was down. I don't think there's any doubt about that one. 142 to go. No problem milking the clock here, especially when you have timeouts. On second and eight. Now complete. Down to the 20 yard line, Jallo again. And they are in field goal range at the very least right now on that 13 yard pickup. What about the game Jallo's having tonight? The Scarlet Knights are playing pretty loose in the secondary. That's just pitch and catch. We yep. might see Rutgers bring some pressure here, Mark. Defense needs a big play here. Brown going to take off on his own on a predetermined run. Pushed out of bounds. They're going to spot it about the 17-yard uh, line. Uh, nifty work along the sideline. Looked like it was going to be a negative play, and Brown turned it back upfield, picked up positive yardage. Any yards you can pick up for your field goal kicker here, you keep those three points in your back pocket. Granted, you're trying to win the football game with a touchdown, but remember, you got the three points to tie the game. Don't take any unnecessary risks with the football. Rutgers looking for a big play with a BCS bit on the line. Up the middle. First to the first down is Steve Slayton, tackled by DeBron Thompson. Who for the Scarlet Knights will make the play if they get it? Will it be Thompson? Will it be McCourty? Uh, you talk about physical. He absolutely ran over Eric Foster, the defensive tackle. Mountaineers call a timeout. Rutgers with three remaining. A BCS pin on the line for the Scarlet Knights. Saturday. Nothing to complain about unless you're working. In which case, we hope you're complaining. It's college football day, so that should tide you over. Then try to get home and throw the football around with over USC. There is now a full-blown conundrum about who should play Ohio State for the national championship. Should it be Michigan? Should it be Florida? We will sort it all out on our bowl selection special. ESPN2, Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. It's a new ad to your schedule. Make time for it. We'll be there. All right, Reese, 104 to go. Rutgers with three timeouts remaining. Mountaineers with two. Third and one coming up. And Greg Schiano for Rutgers, he's going to use his three timeouts. You want to save time on the clock here in case West Virginia scores a touchdown. Or if they tie the game, you want time to come down the field and potentially win in regulation with a field goal. Brown on a predetermined run. Stopped up short of the first down. Big play by Meekins. Chopped a little wood there and a timeout called. And now it's fourth down coming up. Now you saw the look on the face there. Rich Rodriguez knows how big that was to not pick up a first down because it's advantage West Virginia first and goal. 
you force Rutgers to use the timeouts, and then you have the ability to take your shots into the end zone to win the game. You got the three points in your hip pocket to tie. Matt McAfee, a very trusty place kicker, 12 of 15 on the year coming into this game. And with three makes today, and when you don't pick up the first down there, then all of a sudden you leave about 50 seconds after a kickoff for Rutgers to come back down the field, potentially tie, or potentially take the lead if West Virginia ties here with the field goal. So much speculation rampant about the future of both these coaches, but most recently in the last 24 hours, especially that guy on your screen, Rich Rodriguez, reports out of Alabama in Birmingham saying that he will meet with them very shortly to discuss their head coaching position. Rodriguez phoning in on a local talk show yesterday saying that I'm going to repeat myself as clear as I can. I plan on being the coach here at West Virginia for the rest of my career if they'll have me. For now, McAfee comes in to attempt a field goal. Yeah, I think we'll hear from Rodriguez early this week on Alabama. I think it's safe to say the same for Shiano on Miami. McAfee for the tie. And we are knotted at 23, but hold on a sec. Might have been a little motion, or I heard a whistle down in the field. I've not seen any flags of late. Reset the game clock to 57 seconds. Replay fourth down. They're going to make McAfee kick it again. That's tantamount to icing the kicker almost, isn't it? Well, I think West Virginia may have gone before the referee signaled the ball ready for play there. Rutgers had a second opportunity against Louisville. The result of the penalty, they knocked it through on the second one. We'll hear what, see what happens on the second opportunity here for West Virginia. Different type of circumstance. Back of feet. Tied at 23. 53 seconds to go for Rutgers on offense coming up after the kickoff. Should all go according to plan. Back of now with his third make of the day. What a play by the Rutgers defense on that third down. Penetration into the backfield, a loss on the play to force the field goal attempt, and eventually the field goal make. But now the ball's in Rutgers court. Two timeouts to work with, 53 seconds. And Mark, this, this kickoff return is going to be very critical for Rutgers to set up their overall strategy coming down the field. Now, Willie Foster has been pining, you would think, all day for an opportunity to get a good return. Last year, he was the special teams player of the year in the conference, but has been unable to make a play on a kickoff so far today. And coming up on SportsCenter, folks, the Bruins stunned the Trojans today out in Los Angeles. And should Michigan meet Ohio State in the BCS title game, or should it be Florida? Does the current BCS system work? That's an even bigger debate. Neil Everett and Scott Van Pelt will have all the scores and the debates after the game. Well, the only years that it works is when you have two undefeated teams, like last year, 1999, when Virginia Tech played Florida State. But if you don't have two clear-cut undefeated teams, it never works. You know, the question begs, Mark Jones, does college football have it right? Or... Or do, or do you look at all the other sports in college and pro and, and say they've got it wrong? Never like too many computers involved in determining champions. you got to decide it on the field of play. And I'll tell you what, 18 playoff college football, hands down, would be the most exciting sport in the country. Here's the kick. This is Young. Found a nice seam up the right side of the field and is brought down right around the 30-yard line. Cordell Young. Mike Teal has had a hot hand today. He's 15 of 19, a touchdown pass. And in the second half here, he's 9 of 10 passing. And, boy, he's made some big throws today. 
Well, and, and you really have to have confidence in Mike Teal if you're going to put the football in the air here. you got to trust that he's going to make good decisions. You put the ball on the carpet or throw a pick in this situation, the BCS title goes away. away. Teal complete near midfield to Britt. 34 seconds to go. Well, against Louisville, it was an 80-play, 11-play drive. 80-yard, 11-play drive. We'll see what they can get done here. Yeah, the BCS bid on the line. Courageous throw, courageous play call there. Mike Teal with a nice throw on the post corner. Picked up 20. Given time again. There's a flag down at the 31-yard line. The catch made by Britt. See if it stands. There was a little bit of shoving there. Good coverage by Larry Williams. But they seem to be jostling for position there on the sidelines. Holding on the defense. Number three. Ten yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Automatic. First down. Now Britt working against Larry Williams, and Williams getting a couple handfuls of jersey. And you look at the work up front by the Rutgers offensive line. Those last two plays giving Mike Teal plenty of time to be comfortable in the backfield and make decisions. Teal going up top. And it's incomplete, intended once again for Britt. Good coverage by Williams, who won that battle. The Scarlet Knights still with two timeouts, 21 seconds. You're going to have to pick up a couple chunks. Ito has a career long of uh, 53. Yeah, he's two for two on the year, 50 yards and beyond. So he has plenty of leg. The Rutgers looking to Mike Teal to hit a ball or two here and get Ito into a game-winning situation. 21 seconds to go. Get off a couple of plays. Little pressure coming. Pass caught at the 36 by Britt. Timeout. They call a timeout. His forward progress is going to be marked at about the 35-yard line. That was a nice use of the timeout. Quickly at the end of the play using the timeout. 15 from seconds. From there, the field goal attempt by Ito right there would be about 52 yards. Well, with 15 seconds to go and a timeout, I think we'll see a run play from Rutgers on this next down. Yeah, you don't want to risk a sack. You don't want to risk negative yards. You're within Ito's range, the outward limits of his range. And what about those that said that Mike Teal was strictly just a curator of the offense, a guy that could just facilitate things, hand it off to Rice, pass it to Leonard out of the backfield. Well, he's been a lot more than that today. The numbers bear that out. Now, 17 of 22, and he's hit some key passes. There are really two kinds of quarterbacks. Quarterbacks that you ask to go win games for you, and then there's quarterbacks that you ask not to lose games. And at times, Mike Teal has been the latter, the type of guy where you say, hey, we've got Rice, we've got Leonard, we got maybe the top tight end in the country. Don't lose a game for us. But on the road against West Virginia tonight, they asked Mike Teal to go out and win this football game. How about the drop by Townsend on the last drive? And still Mike Teal for Greg Schiano brings his team down the field. I think the Scarlet Knights are going to keep the ball on the ground here with that timeout and try to gain a couple more yards to give Ito a closer shot at the game winner. Third and three coming up. Ito. Forced to watch for now from the sidelines. Leonard DeLone back. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. They're going to pass. Teal incomplete underneath at the 30-yard line for Britt with 11 seconds to go. Yeah, Rutgers. Fourth down coming up. Rutgers rolled the dice on a ball. It was only going to pick up four or five yards. I think you got to be a little bit safer than that, especially when you got a Heisman Trophy candidate you can go to in the backfield. Lance. Jeremy Ito going to get an opportunity here, but first a timeout. Against Louisville. 
on the game-winning attempt. Jeremy Ito actually missed it. This was the first one, but look at the shaded area. This is a 33-yarder. Louisville player jumping off sides. Louisville will remember that play for a long time, and then they pick up the five-yarder, and he drills it from 28. Jeremy Ito, a former freshman All-American, showing great promise even in his first year. And don't forget, coming up immediately after the game, Sports Center. Lloyd Carr will be joining Neil Everett and Scott Van Pelt live after the game. They'll be discussing whether Michigan should meet number one Ohio State in that BCS title game. Does the system need fixing? Does the BCS work at all? Well, Lloyd Carr is a proponent of the playoff system. He's been very clear on that. And if you listen to the experts throughout the week, the people that know the computers and the voting, I, I don't, but they said if SC loses, Michigan would be the team to get in. Jeremy Ito kicking for history. And a place in the books for Rutgers. A BCS bid on the line from 52 yards out. He's 4-7 all time from 50 plus. For the win. No good. And the Mountaineers with six seconds left. Didn't look like he hit it well. This is within his range, and he's comfortable. Now he's comfortable out to 57, 58 yards in practice, but also this game is being played in the 20s, 20 degrees. <laughs> and the ball's a little bit harder when you strike yeah. it with your foot. Rutgers. Cold weather. Well. Barring something incredibly unforeseen, could be headed to overtime here. And I think it's safe to say we are headed to overtime. And yeah, you're looking back on that third down call, Mark Jones. I really like lining up in the eye, you know, and coming downhill, picking up positive yardage. You have a chance to to pop Ray Rice instead of dropping back and trying to hit a four or five yard ball. You take risk out of the equation. Yep. And as it turns out, two or three, maybe even a four-yard run, Ito has enough leg to hit that field goal attempt. Senior day here at Morgantown, West Virginia. And Rick Chiano's team trying to spoil the party for the 25 seniors playing their final home game. Sellout crowd of a little over 60,000 on hand witnessing this one as... The questions as to whether West Virginia could bounce back after that deflating loss last week at home against South Florida have been answered. They've played a very spirited football game. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. Brown going to launch one. And it's incomplete. Pass. Closest receiver was Brandon Miles. That's the end of 60 minutes of play. Zero showing on the clock. Well, actually, I think they may keep a second on the clock here for one last play. Scoreboard clock showing .9 seconds. Oh, well, that case will just snap it and take the knee. We'll go to overtime. I would imagine that Greg Schiano and his crew thought nothing would come easy this year. With a BCS bid on the line, they're going to have to earn it against the Mountaineers and Rich Rodriguez. The game is on the line. Back in Morgantown, West Virginia, number 13 Rutgers and number 15 West Virginia deadlocked at 23 after 60 minutes of play. We are heading to overtime and on the line for Rutgers, a bid to the BCS. Rutgers has never won in Morgantown. They're 0-14 all time against the Mountaineers here on Mountaineer Field. And it's going to take an incredible breakthrough for them to make a mark here and win this game. You talk about suspense. The last six trips for the Scarlet Knights to Morgantown. 
They lost those six games by an average of 42 points, including an 80 to seven thrashing back in 2001. Greg Schiano's first year. The team that wins this toss, of course, will elect to play on defense. See, Greg Schiano, he has uh, fielded phone calls from some of his mentors this week, most notably Butch Davis, a guy he worked with at the University of Miami and shared a few words and promised each other they'd get caught up after the weekend. I would imagine Shiano will have a lot to talk about on Monday morning with Butch Davis. Call from the official on the toss. Neither team has played an overtime game so far this season. This will be the first for both. Rutgers has won the toss, elected to go on defense. West Virginia will be an offense and defend this goal. There's a look at the respective records in overtime. And we'll check in one more time with Reese Davis. Reese, great finish coming up. It is a great finish there, and Oklahoma's trying to finish off Nebraska on a third and goal play in the Big 12 championship game. What a catch by Malcolm Kelly from Paul Thompson. Sooners on top of the Huskers, 21-7. They're starting the fourth on ABC. All right, Reese, and a look at the overtime rules. You saw the coin toss. Each team gets one possession from the 25 per period. So it's declined, no game clock, the play clock only, and you have to go for two, starting with the third overtime. And the premium on taking care of the football goes up drastically in overtime. Defensive touchdown the other way, the game's over. Turnover, you come up with no points, you probably lose. From the 25, Slayton into heavy traffic going nowhere. It'll be second down and 10 coming up. And Jarrett Brown's done. Just a tremendous job tonight. Redshirt freshman, emergency starter. And you think Mountaineers lose so much with Pat White not in the lineup, but he's done a great job, hit some key passes, and made some great runs to get his offensive line out of trouble. These two teams do have overtime history. Mountaineers beat Rutgers 31-24 in overtime in 2000. Brown looking to pass. Under heat, on his feet, open, and he overshot his receiver. Incomplete. Raynaud was the closest one. And it's third down and ten coming up. He was trying to hit Raynaud, and Raynaud, <laughs> five foot ten, trying to get up high. Might have missed time this jump. Just a touch. And oh, Jarrett Brown. Took a little bit off that ball, tried to drop it into the hole. So close. Got to get down to the 15-yard line for the first down. Empty formation, five receivers for Brown. Over the middle, high, incomplete. Fourth down coming up. And McAfee going to be forced to try a field goal now. A very unfavorable three and out for Rich Rodriguez's crew. Yeah, when you fail to pick up yards on a first possession in overtime, you put a lot of stress on your kicker. This is a must make. McAfee, three for four today. This one coming from 42. And he is true. Stay right here, McAfee, good from 42, but now Rutgers with an opportunity coming on offense. Field goal ties it. A touchdown gets them to the BCS. Boy, oh, McAfee has been smooth tonight on pressure kicks, just like, just like pouring butter. <laughs> Tell you what, a kick was right down Main Street. Now the Scarlet Knights get their opportunity. Mike Teal in the spotlight. Mike Teal has had a glorious day. 17 of 23 passing for 265 yards and a touchdown. That one touchdown was a momentum-grabbing strike. 
to Tim Brown. The backs line up out of the eye on first down and ten. Handed out to Ray Rice. And Rice gets knocked after a gain of about one down to the 24-yard line. Second down. Maybe nine or eight coming up. Can you believe this, partner? I mean, if you were to tell me back in August the Rutgers would have a possession in overtime in the final game of the season at West Virginia to win a BCS bid, you got to be kidding me. Louisville Cardinals won earlier today against Connecticut. Interested spectators in this one. Hand it off again. Down inside the 20 yard line, Rice. And it's going to be third and about four coming up. So big call coming up for the Scarlet Knights. And Craig Versteeg, the offensive coordinator for Rutgers, playing it close to the best on the first two play calls. Surprised? I'll tell you, after that play call on third down at the end of regulation, and now I think we'll see Teal put it up. His favorite target has been Britt. Britt has gone for over 106 yards receiving today. Teal. Incomplete, and it's fourth down coming up. Intended for Tim Brown, who cut that touchdown earlier. Yeah, and I don't like that decision. I mean, Tim Brown didn't have the yardage to even pick up the first down, took a big hit. The Rutgers didn't exactly challenge the field vertically on that third down, and this puts a world of weight on Ito's shoulder. Here's the story on Jeremy Ito today. He's made from 36, 21, and 31. And Rich Rodriguez is going to put the guy who calls himself the judge on ice. Timeout called. Ito missed his last kick from 52. Hey, you see coaches use timeouts at the end of games, Mark Jones, to put kickers on ice. And sometimes, you know, not a lot of pressure. But how about Ito here? <laughs> Rutgers trying to get a BCS bid. He's going to have to convert this field goal or the Scarlet Knights are headed to the Texas Bowl. That's the type of pressure that's on Ito shoulder. That's a bit of a drop off when you consider a potential game in the Orange Bowl, which has been the talk coming into this one for Rutgers should they win. Yeah, not set in stone, but the talk was during the week. Scarlet Knights win. They would play in the Orange Bowl. Well, now it's up to Ito, the 5'11 junior, former freshman All-America. Three for four today. Made a game winner several weeks ago against Louisville for a huge win. This one coming from 37 yards out straight away. For the tie. Easy. And we'll go to another second overtime period. Not time to exhale quite yet. Back with more after this. 78 people are here at Mountaineer Field in Morgantown, West Virginia. Rutgers and West Virginia nodded at 26 after both teams made field goals on the first overtime periods. Now West Virginia defensive unit, one of those unusual situations that we see in overtime, a defensive unit comes up with a big stop. They force the field goal try, and now they're right back on the field to face the Scarlet Knights and their offensive team. You only have to wonder if Mike Teal will get an opportunity to throw it a few times here after some rather what some might consider conservative play calling on the last series. They ran it a couple of times on first down and then second down. And I didn't like the play call on third down, throwing a crossing route at two yards. Not enough yardage to even pick up the first down. Leonard is the lone back. Teal going to throw complete at the 22-yard line to Britt. 
to they mark his forward progress. They're going to give him the 21 yard line, almost the 20. Now that's a nice first down play for Rutgers. Obvious run down. They use a short pass. That had West Coast offense written all over it. A short pass to create yards and an easier second down opportunity for Rutgers. Britt with a career high, going over 100 yards receiving for the first time. Rice. Rice still on his feet. He gives you those yards after contact, and he gets the first down inside the 15-yard line. Now that's what Ray Rice is all about, and that's why we're probably going to see him in New York for the Heisman ceremony. How about the cut inside, and then the strength, keeping the legs moving. And he picks up the first down. Over 100 yards. He's hit the century mark. That was a big-time run from the All-America. That's a 14th 100-yard rushing plus game of his career. And the first time the Mountaineers have allowed a 100-yard rusher this season. First and 10. And the second overtime. Rice again. Rice down to the two-yard line. And another first down for Rutgers. Well, against Louisville in the second half. The game of the season for Rutgers to set up this opportunity against West Virginia. Rice took control of that football game, 75 yards in the fourth quarter against the Cardinals. And we're seeing Ray Rice. This has been his calling card. Getting stronger as the game goes on. And just a yard from scoring. Now getting a breather. Ryan Leonard, the lone back on first and goal. Leonard, touchdown! The fifth-year senior punches it home. And a body blow to the Mountaineer defense. The silence deafening. And the work up front by this offensive line. Working in unison. Stapleton at center, the Remington Award finalist. A couple tackles that will probably move on and play on Sundays. And they took control of the line of scrimmage in this second overtime session. Ito in for the extra point. Knocks it through, giving Rutgers a seven-point lead, 33-26. to 26. And now just one defensive sequence, one defensive stand away from making history and winning its first ever Big East Championship and a subsequent BCS bid. Brian Leonard remembers when Rutgers lost 80 to seven back in 2001 to West Virginia. His friends wondered, hey, why would you go to that school? Why would you want to play at a school that loses by that big a margin? Well, he's part of turning things around. Leonard, his fifth rushing touchdown this season. Now Rich Rodriguez faced and forced to make a counter move. First and 10 coming up. Starting off from the 25. For the Mountaineers, now all four downs come into play. You're in four down territory the rest of the way in this second overtime. Slayton brought down at the 20 yard line by Eric Foster out of Miami, Florida. Foster, one of those emotional leaders up front for Rutgers, another one of those quick, undersized defensive linemen. And Foster and Meekins, we've talked about them being the co-captains, and that might have been Devron Thompson from the middle linebacker position. And that was a big shoestring tackle. Slayton might have scored without that play. Second and five coming up. Down in her heat. And he throws it away. Third down coming up. Good pressure by Jamal Westerman. Out of Brampton, Ontario. That's about uh, 40 minutes outside of Toronto to the west. Yeah, that was a nice last second decision by Jarrett Brown. It looked like Jarrett Brown was ready to take a big sack. And a big mental mistake it would have been if he didn't unload that football. Nice play by the redshirt freshman to let the ball go out of bounds and live to fight another day. Automatically, it's two, two down territory. They need a touchdown to keep things going. 
into another overtime period. Third down and five. Downfield, caught, and a first down and goal. What a throw by Jared Brown to Brandon Miles, who was working against Courtney Green. He stood tall and poised in the pocket. Well, Jarrett Brown needed a big play to keep things alive, third and five. And how about the catch by Miles? Corner out, ball was thrown behind him, had to go back for the football, stretched to make the catch. What a play. Picked up 19. Owen Schmidt and Steve Slayton lining up out of the eye. Slayton. And they're an extra point away from tying it up. In the face of seeing their season, or at least this game, come to an end, the Mountaineers showing a lot of resolve and guts. Brazenly putting up a fight here. And a lot of people timeout. wondered how Rutgers. they would react. It's our last charge timeout for this series. And a timeout called. Slayton with his second touchdown of the day. And how about West Virginia working against one of the top five defenses in the country? Mark Jones <laughs> faced with a seven-point deficit. Got to pick up a touchdown to keep this ball game alive. And Jarrett Brown set that up with the throw to Miles. Miles making a terrific play on the post corner out. Now, now we head into this third overtime session and you score in the third overtime, you got to go for two. Brandon Miles, the most experienced of those Mountaineer receivers. He leads the team with six touchdown catches. Almost had one there, a couple yards short, but nonetheless, a clutch catch when it counted most. And he was working against one of the better safeties in the Big East, Courtney Green, one of the most physical. He not only had to reach back and make the catch, but he also had to take the contact and secure the football. I'll tell you what's happening right now in the Jersey Turnpike. That last catch by Miles probably caused a few traffic backups <laughs> along I-95. And for the extra uh, point, McAfee couldn't have asked for a better situation. Rutgers up a touchdown with their defense on the field, the way the defense has performed all year long. Hey, there's Clark Harris. Tall guy at 6'6", six, six, almost 6'7", six, in to try and block this extra point. Number 81, keep an eye on the middle of your screen. Nothing doing. McAfee wants no part of that. Tied at 33 apiece, going into the third overtime period on senior day here. Foster couldn't quite get there in time to stop Slayton. Back with more right after this. Whether it's fired... Pat McAfee with an extra point to tie the game at 33 moments ago. As we head into the third overtime period, and the difference there, go down to the bottom. You have to go for two on a touchdown. I've been impressed with the coolness, the calmness of both kickers, Ito and McAfee. Extra points and field goal tries down the stretch and into overtime, a miss and your team goes away a loser. And both kickers have come up big time. Ito has made some big kicks for Rutgers this year in what has been a real Cinderella-type season. Everybody at the start of the year talked about West Virginia. They talked about Louisville, who, by the way, should West Virginia win this game, Louisville would get the BCS bid. Cardinals winning earlier today against UConn. Look at Ito on the sidelines, uh, probably wishing that he had another opportunity to get a mulligan on that 52-yarder that would have won it for them at the end of regulation. As we head into the third overtime period, I wonder who will make the play, if it will come this time for Rutgers in a storybook season. Signs all along the Jersey Turnpike. During the game against Louisville, where 
saluting the Scarlet Knights that lit up the Empire State Building in red. Tony Soprano drops through. <laughs> First and ten. Mountaineers with possession. BCS bid on the line for Rutgers with a victory. And off to Owen Schmidt on first down. Gets about two yards. Owen Schmidt, a transfer, former all conference player at Wisconsin River Falls. And you watch the option action after the handoff to Schmidt. We haven't seen the option from Rich Rodriguez tonight, but the look was open to the outside. We may see an option here before this is over. On second down. Brown looked like he wanted to throw downfield. Touchdown, Miles. Oh, what a grab. Jared Brown moving the ball back towards the line of scrimmage. Looked like he was going to keep and use his legs. And just before he hits the line of scrimmage, how about this throw? Great touch on that pass, David. Miles at six foot three. Great body control in the end zone. Hooks up with Miles again. It was Miles that kept that drive alive previously on the third down conversion. And now West Virginia has to go for two. Now Jared Brown has made more than a couple great throws working back to the line of scrimmage tonight. Taking a little bit off that, dropping it into Miles. That was a big time throw. The previous play is on the review. They're going to look, enough, look at this one more time. Jarrett Brown. It looked like he was going to tuck the football. Ooh, it's bobbled the there. Moving down between his knees, and I think they may wipe this off. Wow. I'm not sure Miles had possession of that football in the end zone. And it looks like he didn't catch the ball cleanly. But he may have trapped it against his own body there. Yeah, I think it came back up into his arm. Yeah, from that angle, sure looked like he kept the football alive. There must be indisputable, indisputable video evidence to overturn the decision on the field. Yeah, from the front angle, it did look like he was able to and pin that ball. Video confirms the call on the field. Touchdown stands. Brandon Miles used all of his six foot three inch frame and his legs especially to corral that ball. Yeah, he had to use all his skills to pin that ball against his thigh pad. And the second look was definitive. But what about, about Jarrett Brown? The way he say. has played in this football game, redshirt freshman. They're going to go for two. They have to go for two. Owen Schmidt lines up in the backfield beside Brown. A bunch formation trips up to the top of your screen. They spread out the field, Brown, and they got it. Jallo again. The Jallo's gonna go from the bunched formation, work inside. The timing by Jared Brown, waiting for him to come clean. And then how about Jallo keeping his balance and moving the football across the goal line. Jared Brown has been sensational. Here at Mountaineer Field, Morgantown, West Virginia, Rutgers down by eight points with a BCS bid on the line should they win. This is the third overtime period. They have to score on this possession and get the two-point conversion. Mike Teal, their quarterback, has been splendid today. Ray Wrights has gone over 100 yards rushing. They're going to throw. Teal, complete. 
to his tight end, Johnson. And Johnson with a nice run. Pushed out of bounds. Short of the first down. They're going to mark it at about the 16-yard line. Good yeah, bootleg action. Yeah, bootleg action. And also, Mike Teal has to recognize defensive end in his face. Ball looked like it was partially deflected. And Johnson still makes the catch. That was a nice job by Teal with the defensive end showing in his face. Still getting the ball outside to his tight end. Second and one coming up for Rutgers. Rice got the first down. A gaping hole for Ray Rice. Down to the two-yard line. And Rutgers <laughs> invariably, inexorably answering with its own punch. Andrew saved the touchdown with the stop. The Scarlet Knights, they won't die. I mean, they keep coming at you. Down eight points. And look at Ray Rice working between the tackles. Punishing style of running. Rutgers still alive. Bokerin and Leonard now come out of the eye. Leonard, he's not going to get in, not even going to get close. He might have lost half a yard on that play. Holmes, one of the first ones to get there, will be second down and goal. And you know on the sideline, Greg Ciano working with Craig Versteeg, the offensive coordinator. First things first, they have to score, but you know they're talking about a two-point play. And they're going to try to get to their best two-point play if they can. Those are the types of discussions that go on even when you're trying to score to get within two. Ray Rice in a tailback gets the call. Rice stopped up short of the end zone at about the one. It'll be third down and goal. Well, you have to go to your bread and butter. And Rutgers getting enough push up front. Offensive line playing effectively here in the second half on into the third overtime. I think we'll see Rutgers again test West Virginia up front, running the football behind Zuda, Fladell, Stapleton, Stevenson, and Sosa. Leonard and Rice in the backfield. Now they empty it out except for Rice back there. Touchdown, Rutgers. Rice got in. And they're going to go for the two-point conversion to try and tie this at 41. I think the Mountaineers felt like they might have stopped Rice short. But that was the umpire that gave us the touchdown signal. Usually you get the line judge or the side judge coming in. And great work again up front. The big offensive line, really the group that has set the table for this championship run by Rutgers. And a nice job of running down on the goal line by Rice. They have to go for the two-point conversion. Two points for BCS bid. Two points for history. Two points for their first Big East title ever. And they're going to review that last run, the touchdown run, okay. from Ray Rice. Yeah, and I can't argue this. I mean, you want to get this right. You want to make sure that Rice did get into the end zone. So much on the line in this football game. The Rutgers and this offensive line all starts with Stapleton. He's really been the glue of the unit, the Remington finalist at center. I but thought he got at, in. Look at the standoff at the line of scrimmage. Mountaineers using numbers all night long. And you can see the umpire, you can see the umpire coming in. He makes the touchdown signal. He sees the play cleanly. I believe I just heard that. Ray Rice with three players from New Rochelle on this Rutgers roster. Yeah, this is the angle right here that I think the boys upstairs will be watching very closely and really i didn't see an angle mark that's going to give us indisputable evidence that they should wipe this touchdown off and it also gives rutgers a little more time to get their team over on the sideline to talk over the two-point play to go over options with mike teal i mean ideally mark jones you want to give the quarterback 
A pass and then a run option. After review, video confirms the call on the field. Touchdown stands. Okay, so they need the two-point conversion here to tie it up and keep their BCS good hopes alive. What do you like on this play? Well, I, I don't like dropbacks typically on a two-point try. I like to move the quarterback and give the quarterback the option to score either with his feet or his arm. They like to have two options on the play. I think they ought to move Teal off play action. They used him successfully in bootleg a few plays ago. As now he's going to operate out of the shotgun. They empty out the backfield, five receivers. Rice split to the top of your screen. Teal. Nobody open. No good. It's over. Mountaineers win. Ron Rivers broke it up, and Teal was looking to Ray Rice. Not a very clean picture. Now, Teal had time, and he elects to go to his tailback, working back to the middle of the field. And Von Rivers makes the break on the football, and that might have been the play of the game, Mark Jones. Certainly was. On senior day, Mountaineers win it. Let's go down to Stacy. Coach, Coach, you just completed the winningest season in the history of this program. What's your reaction right now? I'm so proud of my seniors, my football team. They kept playing hard. Rutgers has got a great football team. Our guys kept battling in. Our crowd helped us. It's a great win for us. No Pat White injured with that ankle. Your backup quarterback comes in. Brown was sensational. What do you think about his play? Yeah, I've been telling everybody, Jared Brown can play. And he did a great job today, kept his composure. Really, our whole team did it for our seniors. Coach, you know I have to ask you, what's the reaction to the coaching links between you and uh, the coaching opportunities out there right now? I can't hear what you say. I said, what's your reaction to the reports that you're linked to coaching propositions uh, out there? I'm the coach of West Virginia. I'm excited to be here. I'm proud of what happened for my seniors right now. What are the types of reasons that keep you at an institution like this? Well, we got a great fans. Uh, we got a great coaching staff here, a great environment. More than anything, we got a bunch of young men who will hold the rope for West Virginia football. Lastly, Coach, when you go in that locker room, what do you tell your players? I'm going to tell them I love them. I tell my seniors I'm proud of them. Let's go get the next one. Congratulations, Coach Mark. All right, they're off to a January Bowl game. 25 seniors end their home season successfully. What a game. And for Rutgers, well, they're now 0 and. 15 all time in Morgantown and their bid for a BCS game dies in Morgantown. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com and Louisville is the winner of the Big East. Sports Center's next. How's it? Welcome to Sports Center. I'm Neil Everett. USC needed to beat UCLA Saturday, or the Trojans were going to the Rose Bowl in January and not the BCS title game. The men of Troy had their title dream smashed to pieces.